how you want to play it. That's how you want to play it, Patrick. That's how he plays it. All right. Well, let's uh, let's crank this off. Ooh, that sounds bad. Let's do a show, everybody. Uh, <laughs> it didn't sound right, did it? Oh, it sounded just right. Or it was just That's right. Perfect. Fantastic. Yeah, All right. Here goes. Uh, I'm going to start it off, and off we go. It begins in three, two, one. <laughs> The World of Warcraft podcast, so you don't have to. This is the instance. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Instance. That's right. This is The Instance episode 540, 540. Time to blaze up. Oh, that's 420. Sorry. I applied my own pot number to a thing that didn't deserve one. I'm Scott Johnson, joined today by Patrick Beja. Hello, Patrick. Hey, you know what? I think some people have been smoking something somewhere uh, mm. in the topics that we're going to be covering today. I'm oh, sure. I, I ah, see oh. throwing a little early shade. I All see right. what you're doing there. Hmm. But who oh. am I throwing shade to? Huh? Maybe a little. There's a little to go around. Let's say that. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody messed up. Yeah. Everyone deserves a little shade this week. Speaking of shade, I don't know. I don't know why that's a transition, but we also have Garrett. <laughs> Garrett Wines are all fresh from his BlizzCon trip. Hello, Garrett. Welcome back. Hi, Scott. I I, I think I still have a contact high from how much freaking weed I smelled while in California. Oh yeah, you guys really know how to embrace a new law down there in California. I'll tell you what. You just like. Uh, you're not afraid to let it all hang out. There would be times where a, a car would pass you on Catella or something near the convention center, and just because their windows open, you'd get <laughs> blasted with like the the dankest weed. <laughs> just I love listening to you try and talk about pot. It's so <laughs> it's great. Like a, it was like a <laughs> kind of a wet, moist, like humid weed blast. And all we could do, <laughs> all we could do on the street was just kind of groove on it. There was nothing you could do about it. <laughs> It smelled like a really. It smelled like a banging concert everywhere you went. Yeah, even at the wall. You're at the Walgreens. You're like, that's some good stuff. Oh yeah, no Walgreens. I <laughs> when I walked into Walgreens, I assumed Walgreens was now dispensing the stuff, and maybe they were. I don't know. But um, so essentially, what you're saying is California has has turned into the suburbs of Paris. Kind of, yeah. Uh, We've become you uh, finally, which mm. really was the goal the entire time. Good choice. Our entire uh, grand experiment of democracy was all about getting wrapping right back around to where the French are. So. Uh, that, that was our goal. Well, and here you still we are. have a few, you know, tiny things to do to get there. Yeah, you you will. We all want will. tiny things. Wait, what? All right, hey, here's the deal. Uh, we're <laughs> we're back at it. Uh, it's a it's a week after BlizzCon. Uh, today, uh, a week ago, we were in line having a terrible time with security trying to get into the opening uh, ceremonies of the of the thing. And uh, I think today it kind of goes without saying that we are pretty much going to be the show that is the roundup of what happened at BlizzCon. And there was a lot to say about a lot of things, not just Warcraft related. We're going to cover it all. So if you're thinking, oh, man, I don't want to hear about all the BlizzCon stuff. I only want to hear about Patch 8.2 or whatever. Bad news. Uh, we're going to cover everything. And we've been kind of sitting on it to talk about it today. And so it's happening. So here, let's go. Uh for, before I get too far, though, I want to say hi to Maddie. She's in Ohio. Uh, it's somebody I met out there when I was in Columbus uh, for a trip a couple, a few weeks ago. And uh, she was awesome and super sweet and nice. And she listens to the show all the time. And I, and I said, hey, I'm going to mention you on the show. What's your name? And she gave me her name. And then I promptly forgot to do it because my brain oh, sucks. No. I know. My brain is stupid. And I finally found a note. I was going through a bag. And I went, oh, my gosh, there's, I didn't do this. So I'm doing it now. Maddie, Hi. And thanks for listening to the show, and thanks for being such a, a fan. She was very, thanks, very nice. Thanks, Maddie. Yeah. You're awesome. See? He'll love you. Even Patrick thinks that. I'll bet Garrett does too deep down in his heart. Hi, Maddie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was cute. Anyway, uh, let's get right to it. So I broke this down by game, even though that's a little tricky to do. But uh, the other way was to go, well, let's start at the opening ceremonies and work our way through. And that sounded terrible in my head, so I don't want to do that. Instead, we'll just talk about it per game, what the... Um, uh, the major stuff was everybody out there knows kind of what happened, but this is a lot of impressions that both I and Garrett had on the floor. I want to hear Patrick's impression from someone who was usually at BlizzCon, but this year was not and saw it remotely. If mm -hmm. his experience was much different than ours, especially when it came 
to a, a, a certain mobile game we'll talk about shortly. <laughs> Uh, I don't. I mean, I think it was. We'll talk about it, but I think it might have been pretty similar. Yeah. Which I guess my reaction was, uh, I, I guess if there's any BlizzCon to miss, this is probably the one I want to. Yeah, miss. I'm gonna say. I'll. I will say that I think if you were gonna miss one, it it it's this is one of those like this is the geek is year kind of deal a little bit. Yeah. Um and. I'm not. That is not to say that you know BlizzCon wasn't great in all the ways that BlizzCon is usually great. It's just there were a couple of factors that were just a little bit strange. I think the the opener was super standard, and and again, it's hard to live up to to the the hype of you know always having something amazing. There, who knows where they are in the current cycle of things, and so they didn't have perhaps as much. It was all kind of standard across the board. Um, it's the details where things think- get interesting. Some of the panels are super interesting. I mean, I, here's what I think. While I'm honored people say this, a lot of people have come up and said, hey, the best panel by far of the entire con was your WoW Q&A panel that you moderated. And at first I'm like, oh, that's really sweet of you. And then it occurred to me, they're, st- they're probably saying this because that's the bar was lower this year. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like it's not I, I really that great. It's just it was better than usual because everything else kind of maybe paled compared to I mean, also I, I, they want to make you happy yeah i maybe. think it was legitimately a really a really solid solid panel scott um yeah. i personally i would tip my hat to the uh to the classic panel i thought it was amazing and really interesting oh wow uh, more more than the actual classic game we'll talk about that later but yeah the panel no the, no, the classic you're right i think if there's one panel you have to watch the classic one is you shouldn't miss it because the I, we can get to that when we talk about well classic but um i did want to say Saying that this was a kind of weak year has doesn't have a lot to do with uh, the the mobile Diablo game or the controversy. Like even even if you take it away, let's say you hate that. Even if you take it away, there isn't a huge amount of big news. Um, and every once in a while, uh, you know, every three or four years, there's one BlizzCon when when where there isn't one huge big announcement that everyone loves. Mm-hmm. Um, and and as you mentioned, the geek is. It was one of those and yeah so that was probably one of those as well yeah. and i'm glad i wasn't there for that one if there's <laughs> one i had to miss i'm yeah i think i'm gonna I be th- happy that, to be at the next one what's happening you're laughing again no no go ahead garrett go ahead and then i'll oh, say why i'm I, laughing i was saying i feel like 2010 is widely accepted as the most lackluster blizzcon year yeah um mm. for me i could not look at it through more rose-colored glasses because it was the first blizzcon i ever went to mm. Um, so I was losing my shit <laughs> like, yeah. while I was there because I had just always wanted to go. Yeah. Um, but even I, like, if I'm just looking at all of them, just from what was announced and how the opening ceremonies went, uh, I kind of, I'm, I'm, I can't defend 2010. Right. They had nothing to go. Yeah. Um, they had skipped BlizzCons before. It kind of felt like that one should have been a, a skip year. Yeah. Um, and I would, yeah, I think this BlizzCon kind of comes in second place for the most lackluster BlizzCon. Yeah, they skipped. Uh, yeah. So the, I was, I couldn't remember what they had skipped. They'd skipped 2006 and they had skipped and 2011. 12, yeah, now, 12. I was there at 11, 12. but 12, yeah. That being said, I don't think we're ever going to skip a BlizzCon again. Uh, so I think we should all just get used to the fact that the Blizzard machine. <laughs> sometimes. Forward, yeah. And they're going to release things when they're ready and not necessarily just kind of keep them in the hopper for a BlizzCon. I think that is a really good I, attitude I, I do to want have. To add something, though. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Before we move on, I do want to add the fact that I think another big factor um, was the fact that I think they neglected the uh, presentation aspect of it. Um, the the devs that were there were largely um, nervous and not used to doing these things. I think, mm. uh, I, I you know, it was incredibly apparent when you went from well the 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 issue with the um, Hearthstone presentation to Jeff, yeah. and and Jeff for the Overwatch one was so comfortable like he put the audience in his pocket immediately and and everyone was super excited about what he had to say um and and that i think they could work on even when they don't have big things to announce it's like the charisma didn't come through um and and this isn't even to say you know it's a personality thing of course it has a role but jeff Back in the day, Jeff Kaplan uh, was super weird and awkward. And now he's comfortable and he's managed to turn his awkwardness into something endearing that people really go for. So I think there's a, a lot to be done there 
um, for, I, I think they neglected it, like kind of coasting on, well, it's BlizzCon, everyone love us. Mm -hmm. And well, and well, even without, even before the Diablo announcement, it was kind of going a little bit slow. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But it, it also my other kind of big point I've been mentioning a lot when I, when I talk to folks about this BlizzCon kind of, you know, why it kind of felt flat, it, like it's timing. Like think of the timing, like who's left? Who's left that we're used to seeing on stage that is stage trained? Rhodes gone, Metzen's gone. It's like Hazacostas and Kaplan, and that's basically it. Everyone yeah. else is new blood. We're not used to seeing them on stage, and they have big shoes to fill. Yeah, I, I agree that's with that. That's the point. I think they could have they could have made this be trained to make it a little bit more dynamic. Yeah, um, I, I think so too. And the, the the one if there was anything we gained from from the WoW Q and A uh, for me personally was. Our little stunt with Metzen worked out great and all, and it was funny and it was fun and it was all of that. But what I hadn't thought of and what I immediately felt and then felt after, and now that I've seen the panel um, on the virtual ticket again, even more so I feel this way. The reason that was so impactful wasn't that it was a funny stunt or wasn't, I mean, that was all fine. It was that there. it was a return of this voice and this face that can immediately electrify the crowd. That can immediately get them, you know, stoked and and saying and yelling horde and alliance like they mean it, not the kind of tepid way they do it now with other presenters. If other people come out and go, "Where am I horde at?" People kind of go, Rah. you know, it's not that big a deal. They're kind of like sick of it. Metzen does it, and everyone snaps to it, man. Like they're well, back it's, in. It's, it's literally thrall. <laughs> it's literally thrall, but it's also there's 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 a passion that he spent so much passionate time, sweat, tears, and blood at that company. And so when he got up and made made a little bit of a of, of a noise, you felt the tenor change, like the whole building changed. That's you know I think that's true, but you're you're I think a lot of people will lit, hear this and think, oh, you know, the people who could do that are gone. And I think the example of uh, Kaplan in that case is really important because he was as flat as the others were on that BlizzCon. But then I don't know if he learned, he became more comfortable, you know, his persona changed. I don't know. But my point is, it's not necessarily, oh, you need to bring Metzen and, you know, whoever, Chilton and uh, Morheim back because we're never going to get that otherwise. I disagree. I don't even think you necessarily need to not use the people that were on stage now. Right. I just think somehow they need to be more comfortable or trained because it's a show. You know, you're in front mm. of tens of thousands of people and millions at home and you need to entertain them. You can't just show up and and present your slide like you would in your meeting room um back in the office right. uh people <laughs> people need to be entertained and that's not easy to do so i think they realized this with this one uh i think that's one of the takeaways uh you know uh beyond the other many very obvious takeaways yeah. they're going to be uh, uh, talking about. I think that's one of the other ones they're going to be discussing. I agree. I'm sure there's been meetings already about this very fact. And, it's, and, I, and, and I couldn't agree more. I think that uh, they can get that magic back. The, the hard part, and, I, and I, I, I sympathize with them a little bit because this is sort of hard to maintain. Um, this idea of a long-running thing where people are often blown away or super stoked or have their fandom fed in a very specific way. And when it falters a little, it's easy to say, ah, Blizzard's losing it. Or it's, it's easy to sort of lash out. But it's a hard thing to maintain. I've done, I don't know how long, this show and other shows where you you worry about the same thing. Like the instance is had, it's, it's ups, it's downs, it's middle ground, it's high ground, it's low ground. But you're always trying to like just keep it where, where it's at and keep it growing and going like in an angle. BlizzCon has the same problem. Everybody in probably every industry has this problem. You're always just trying to keep it that way. And this year it was just kind of, you know, and they couldn't quite maintain it. And it's it. happened before. Oh, of course it has. And it will happen again. I mean, this is an Apple problem. It's a Samsung problem. It's a, it's a, any, think of any major company who comes out and wows everybody with something cool. They have those times or years where people are like, oh, well, that wasn't any big deal. I'm yeah, but do any of those companies ever, ever wow people with their personality? Because I don't think so. Um, sometimes. I mean, well, uh, it's sometimes. I mean, Apple. Yeah, I'd say Apple has Apple has been uh, emblematic of that idea of a dynamic, uh, super interesting dude like Steve Jobs who would come out and kind of, you know, create that that reality distortion field. And Tim well, Cook, I, I Tim mean, Cook's I, I, just getting to a place where he's kind of getting there, like kind of getting to a place where his presentation is sort of exciting, 
but it's nothing like it used to be. So I think it that, does. That's kind of what I was getting at. Is yeah. I think it used to be that way with jobs, and I don't think they've come close since. Oh yeah, no, I, I totally agree. So now now it is much more dependent on the product, but also their maturity. And in a way, this is a sign of maturity for Blizzard. And sometimes maturity comes with tone deafness. Sometimes you get to a place where you're like, okay, well we're we're good. We're we're bigger than we've ever been. We've got more things happening than we ever have, and we have a lot of things in the hopper and. This ad ham stuff's awesome. They're switch. They have a they have a big transition for the CEO. Like all this stuff is big company stuff built on the back of much 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 success for twenty seven years. And sometimes when you get there, you forget <laughs> kind of what you're saying and doing. And a lot of people want to just go. Well, that's the Activision talking. Eh, it's too easy to say that. I think this is just this is just Blizzard. Just a little bit kind of forgetting what the event itself is for versus what smart business on mobile is for cuz no one denies that that there isn't billions to be made in mobile and that no, I have don't no dive into the mobile thing yet. All right. We're not going to no. get there yet. Yeah, I don't want to jump ahead. Yeah. All right. So actually let's start here with World of Warcraft. Here's what we got. We got the Lost Honor cinematic which we now understand all of these full-blown rendered cinematics that were made around the intro of BFA were created roughly the same time. Well, they were literally created at the same time. Uh, that way they could piecemeal them out over time and continue the story with this very high fidelity method. And I think it's great. I really liked Lost Honor, this new cinematic that they showed. Uh, I thought it was great. Uh, the line, I want my horde back, is rad. And uh, if you haven't seen it yet, you should go watch it. But basically we get a continuation of where Saurfang's at, where, uh, where our good buddy... Um, uh, 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 Anduin is, and how he's how he's uh, feeling saucy and opening doors without worried yeah, about getting I, I, eaten I by an orc. I know the answer, but I have yeah. a question. Yeah, w w why is Greymane just hanging out in full on beast mode uh, during casual conversation <laughs> with Anduin? I know the answer is because that model was already made for the intro cinematic, <laughs> but in reality, I imagine it's like. Imagine every WWE wrestler yeah. in normal life. They walk into McDonald's to order a cheeseburger, and they're they have their head dunked in water, and they're wearing spandex. That's what that is like, mm. and it bothers me. It, they didn't like that, huh? Like they just put him straight in. He should be. In <laughs> yeah, he's just he's just a full on Morgan form. Like dude would Listen. be, dude would be RP. Yeah, he Green would Man. go back into human form to have this conversation with this king. They're, mm. they're not. They're not Green at war. Green has a condition. Okay, oh. it's not his fault. <laughs> His his insurance isn't that great. Uh, he can't get it addressed as well as he would like to. So it's yeah. not it's not he's not responsible. Well, also the the theory. I know that the timelines are all a little jacked, but the theory is that this is all happening in relative swiftness. So his arrest after the uh, the incidents in Lordaeron and and his throwing in jail in theory was like a day ago for for Anduin. So I really is it a cooling off period. Is that what you're saying? Like I don't. Just, I don't think he's been where, in there. Where are you getting that from, Scott? My I don't own think that's in, the case. intuition. I don't think he's supposed to be in there for two oh. months or something. Like it's not. I don't think this is real time with the game release. I think it's told in a I way that's like he got thrown in jail. I mean, think about it for a second. If you watch that stuff back to back, you would have a very. You'd have like a nice slow fade, but then down comes Anduin and, and knocks in there and says, "All right, well." We've had you in here for a couple of days. You've been eating nothing but gruel and uh, fingernails or whatever. Here's, uh, you know, here's my, here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to leave this door I, open. Please don't kill I, me. I, I, don't, I don't think it's I been... really don't think there's any reason for it to be the next day or two days after and not uh, a couple of months later. It could absolutely I, I, be a couple well, of months. Could, later. I'll, I'll defend think. Scott just saying that why did Anduin wait this long to go talk to him? It's not like Sylvanas has done anything else since BFA released. Oh, because, because the war isn't going as well as he would have hoped. And yeah, he's but looking the, for but solutions. It, I, I mean, I'm going to just plant my flag and say it's ambiguous as to when it takes place. Yeah, uh, it but could, yeah. Anduin's main concern seems to be Sylvanas, and um, as a Horde player, I haven't seen her since <laughs> this expansion came out. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right about that. But okay, so uh, Blizzard could go along, or I, maybe it's not important, but I wouldn't mind if somebody out there had a good timeline on this. And if someone does, send me a link in the chat or whatever, because I'd love to know what that actually is. But that's been my the, my impression all along is that this stuff is very tightly connected time wise. Uh, I don't think huge amounts of time have gone past, but maybe Patrick tried. It could have been months. I have no idea. Uh, but anyway, I like that a lot. I thought it was real good. It looks great, of course. Kind of a given that it would. Uh, we didn't know it was coming, so it was a nice surprise. 
Um, but that's the highlight, really. I mean, WoW Classic being playable, and uh, we'll get to Warcraft 3 Reforged in a second, but I, I, that's sort of a separate thing. But Warcraft, in terms of presentation of BlizzCon, was super limited. There wasn't a ton to, to show. Um, the panels were obviously more in-depth about upcoming patches and changes and tweaks and stuff like that, like you'd expect. But we're definitely in that second year BlizzCon where the, the game is out, people are playing it, and you know we're not we're not you know going to get a bunch of groundbreaking news about world of warcraft so yeah we've i mean we've had a lot of blizzcon that are like that right because sure. you can't have an expansion announced at every blizzcon so it's like every other blizzcon is kind of a gap year <laughs> for world of warcraft I, so they're just talking about new patches um and and i thought this one was fine i thought wow had a strong showing yeah I think it was, you know, there was a lot of information about upcoming patches. They went all the way to 8.25, uh, I think, uh, with a few hints. The difference would be, uh, uh, in my opinion, that more people... This is a, an expansion that more people have stopped playing a couple of months after it was released, as opposed to Legion, where people were so happy that they kept playing for, you know, a little bit longer, I, I think. So... The same BlizzCon about Legion was more exciting because everyone was very hungry for uh, what the new patches were going to bring. And maybe that's a little bit less the case here with VFA. Um, but that was... Well, yeah, and in, in, in that particular BlizzCon, they announced class mounts. They announced we're going to Argus. Like, some yeah. big things were dropped. Um, I'm really, really excited to go to Najatar. Mm -hmm. But... I, I feel like, you know, it didn't have the same effect on the crowd as right. uh, we're going to the Legion's homework. Well, but, but we're also, we're not, good we're also not that far in. Like, we're three months in. Um, no, but it was the same release. for Legion. Um, Legion came out, what, <laughs> October, uh, August 30th, I think. So it was roughly the same. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. It feels like maybe they could have done more with that, but maybe they wanted to leave the stage for... Uh, Hearthstone technical difficulties and then Warcraft 3 reforged. Maybe that was the plan. Uh, we'll get to that in a sec. I thought they did a really good job salvaging that. I mean, you got to do what you got to do and hats off to him for it. And having met some of those backstage people, they are an efficient, hardworking bunch. I don't know what happened to the sound on that stage or what the deal was. No one told me, but but it, it seemed like they recovered as well as you can expect. It, and, so. and it wasn't a big deal. They, you know, it was funky for a couple of minutes and then it was fine. Yeah. I was about to say, but, uh, how quickly they were just like, all right, get Jeff up now. He's got to go. We got to get yeah. rolling with Overwatch because we had to cut. Like, that was amazing. Like, yeah. Jeff seemed like he was ready. Yeah. yeah. Like, he didn't, he the, didn't miss a beat. In fact, it almost felt planned weirdly. I know it wasn't, but, you know, it had the quality of like, all right, well, here comes Kaplan. He's going to do his thing and he's super good at it. All right. Let's talk about <laughs> yeah. Warcraft 3 Reforged. I thought it was a big surprise. Now, I don't think it's a surprise that they were working so, on. Are you, are you just going to, not even talk about well classic oh That's no did I, I didn't mean I to skip that no let's for two and a half minutes no no but. no let's do it but sorry i did this out of order <laughs> wow classic was not only um uh there at the show but also everybody at home who had a vt played it or in theory could play it and did play it i assume a lot of people a lot of people did i waited till i was home to play it oh you didn't play it there I, I, there were so many things I had to try because I was so confused by Diablo Immortal. I had to go try that. I was so excited about Diablo or Warcraft Three Reforged. I, that was the first damn demo I played. Um, WoW Classic, I, because I know I knew going in it was just a leveling experience. I'm like, I'd rather do this at home from the comfort of my home and like really take some time with it. I don't want to be like rushed out of the demo station. Oh, well, so did I don't you like it. Yeah, what did you, what? Uh, I found myself rather enjoying it. Actually, I thought it was super relaxing. Um, you, it does have a much longer draw distance and better shadows than vanilla. So th it does look prettier, uh, than original classic world of Warcraft. Not um, much, not much, but a little, yeah, not much. No, no. It's still got the old and busted, uh, uh, character <laughs> models, but, Oof. um, overall I was, uh, I was surprised how much I enjoyed it again. I'm not, I'm, this is not my declaration that I am leaving modern <laughs> well for classic, but I'm definitely going to play it. Um, especially since yeah. we found out. If you're already paying for a while, you've got it. It's your game. Okay. Now, I just want to say how glad I am you're here today. Because I was worried this was just going to be a poo-poo on Classic Show because I really had a bad time with it. I don't want to play it. <laughs> it's not for me. I'm glad it exists for those who want it. And I'm also glad that you were pleasantly surprised. That that makes me happy. And, I'm, and I know there are people who are stoked about it and are, can't wait to do it and played it and loved it. I got in there and just wanted to bang my head against the wall. I really, really disliked the experience. Now, will I download it and try it again? 
uh, with a little more time and I'm not just in a press demo room and all of that, yes, because I want to, you know, I really, I do want to actually see kind of, I want to try to be in the shoes of those who are really jazzed about this sort of thing. But for me, it's like playing Molten Core when, when Roar Lords had their Molten Core redo. It just made me realize how nostalgia is a funny freaking I, thing and i don't i'm with you there the, the molten you know. core redo is, is terrible I, I think i'm just of the opinion that molten core is a bad raid <laughs> um, yeah yeah because uh i have gone back to things like uh well obviously I, you can't go back to original nax but i think nax holds up i think blackwing lair holds up i think molten core is bad yeah hmm. yeah but we, we enjoyed it back in the day or i don't know if enjoyed is the right word for molten core but it's uh, all you had I mean, <laughs> It's yeah. all we had. Yeah. It, it, it was a place uh, where you got your big, the big EP, and you got your tier that you could show off. That's why you liked Molten Core. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the entirety of WoW. But um, <laughs> the, I, I will agree. You know, the like levels of spells and casting a buff will eat up a quarter of your mana, and you have to drink to like it was it was terrible. I I really, and, and you said. Scott, uh, I realized it wasn't for me. I think both of us have been saying for like three years now, this is not for us. So mm -hmm. I don't think we realized it by playing it. Mm -hmm. um, the, the two interesting thing, one you alluded to, uh, Garrett, is it's included in your subscription, which was a surprise um, because it could have been, you know, five bucks for it and you would have to pay extra if you already were subscribing to WoW. But... To me, the more telling thing is that you can't have it without, you know, there isn't a reduced price subscription if you only want WoW Classic. Mm -hmm. So if you want to play WoW Classic, you have to pay for WoW, period. So that's probably a, a good way of getting people to stay subscribed. They're, they're like, ah, whatever, I'll have both. No, it makes um, sense. Like I, want I wondered about this for sure because I thought, it's easy to look at it just from that angle of, ah, oh, it doesn't cost anything extra on top of your current subscription. But I never yeah, really thought of it with the perspective that's of... That's not the important part. No, I never thought of it as like, oh, wait, there are people who only want to do this yeah. and aren't playing <laughs> Modern WoW and now have to come play full WoW price to play WoW Classic, which I hadn't thought of. Mm -hmm. And I, well, is, that, yeah. is that a complaint for a lot of people? Like, I haven't actually heard... People talk about a lot of hate for for classic and i know the sharding thing is whatever that was for demo purposes and people should calm down about dumb stuff like that but but i don't understand i actually never really understood where where people were maybe getting the hate from other than maybe somebody was disappointed that it wasn't as fun as they thought it would be or like me it's just like ah, i don't want to go back like it seemed like it was fine like it ran and yeah you know did what yeah, yeah everyone i talked to that wants to play it seemed pretty happy with blizzcon uh, and then everyone else was just like, yeah, it's not for me. I, I didn't feel, I didn't get any strong opinions yeah. uh, about WoW Classic in the negative anyway. Uh, like I said, the folks I talked to that want to play it seem really stoked about what they announced as far as the business model. Yeah. Uh, and the joke is, I mean, you watch that panel, they were harping on it being an authentic recreation. And what's more authentic than having to pay $15 a month for it? Yeah, <laughs> pretty damn authentic. And, uh Talking about that panel, really go and watch it. Like the, the choices, first of all, the research they had to do to get this build going and to manage to get all of the information, the database, like it, it is crazy. And then super interesting, the choices they're making, what to keep as it was, even though it's not super convenient and what to change because it wouldn't make sense to keep it as it was super interesting so go check out the uh how's it called like recreating the past or yeah. something like that the wow classic right. uh, uh, explanation <laughs> panel really cool. i didn't put it up so i'll just mention someone put that stuff on youtube the whole damn thing is yeah there's a whole bunch of stuff yeah. from the thing uh, my, my q and a's on youtube and i didn't do it and I'm, i don't think that's supposed to be there but but anyway if you go yeah if you go look at that one i want to say that was a friday panel uh friday afternoon and it's worth Maybe. watching. Um, it's really good, and it's you know it was fun is to to hear that, and then also I've been reading that book. Oh, where is it? The book uh, by uh, now all the names are fleeting from me, but the one that's about the early days of WoW, and he just did that five hundred thousand dollars. John Stats. John Stats. There you go. Uh, it's fun to read that to think about it. Like I love the 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 underpinnings of all of this is super interesting to me, but I really don't want to spend my playtime in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would rather play with their crafting today and that's just me so i'm glad it's there for everybody and look at it this way you could go all negative and say well i gotta pay a full subscription for this whole game 
kind of is the authentic experience. If you think it's so great, man, you should. You know, should. <laughs> and there's not a box price. Yeah. Like you just got to pay. Oh, that's the other thing. Yeah. No box price. They did say that um, they confirmed that there would be. This is just a quick side note, but there would be event stuff in there the way it rolled out in vanilla. They didn't get too deep into whether or not they'd keep expanding upon it or that one day vanilla would include Kata or, you know, Wrath of the Lich King or any of that. But they didn't shut it down either. Um, but they did say it's, that, yeah. you know, on Courage and that sort of stuff, you're going to get those yeah, things. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. I think, you know, if that's the one exception, I will agree. I will admit, if you know they ever i mean at some point they will uh uh get to the opening of the gates of encourage i will try to go there i think at that point i'll try to get into that thing you're just gonna again. like That's corpse the... run a level one gnome uh <laughs> exactly, <laughs> the exactly. Gates of AQ. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord speaking uh, yeah. of that that is i think out of everything it's not the the most fun i've had in wow but that's probably the most socially memorable event that happened that and that's when i started listening to the the, instance yeah that's when the show started that's when the show exploded like yeah this was a big moment in all of our lives i think for a lot of reasons but on karaj and and you remember the the cursed blood the the blood curse the what was it um the i wonder if they're going to do that as well you know you you it's so emblematic you open the dungeon and then for a day or something the bug that spreads the curse is still there so everyone's dead everywhere yeah. oh my that god they should totally do that and then they're like just yeah. time patch to just patch it out the next yeah, day that, exactly. that, that i thought was really cool that they were going to be doing they were going to roll out the patches more or less in the order that they released uh i thought that was really rad yeah. and, and let me ask uh let me ask you both this um you're not excited for WoW Classic. Cool. I get it. Not your jam. Yeah. What if it is a success and they launch a BC Classic server and they launch a Wrath of the Lich King Classic server? At, at what point do you get excited to actually go and revisit an older state of World of Warcraft? When did I have to? When did I get to stop buying arrows? When was that? Was that Wrath <laughs> was that of the Lich, Lich King? King? It might have been Lich King. King. So yes, Probably my answer King. is I'd be happy to play... I would love. Actually, I who am I kidding? I would totally log in and play Lich King. Uh, but you would level like you would actually go level in 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 uh, Northrend, level so a it, character to 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 eighty. Probably. If I didn't not. have to start at one, yes, I think I think if they launch those servers, first of all, it shouldn't replace Classic like Vanilla Classic. I think that should be its own standalone servers because that's what people want. But I think right. then I think if this is successful, if it helps the numbers of World of Warcraft, I think there's an argument. For launching BC servers and launching Lich King servers, so on and so forth. I don't know where you stop. Probably right. at Warlords so- of Draenor, because who wants to play that? Um, <laughs> uh, but so you would have multiple servers, <coughs> and each one has a different state of the game. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, I- yeah that, that, I'm just I'm just putting it out there. I'm, like this yeah. is total cool. theorycraftville. We have n- they didn't mention anything of this, but it would stand a reason that if this is successful if they see a noticeable increase in paid subscribers when classic launches that that's going to be on the back of their mind and we already know from that classic panel how much freaking data they still have saved yeah i think that the they and they said or has costa said in the in the uh, q a that um you know they didn't know yet they're gonna let it they're gonna let it be its own thing run its own course and figure out what to do with it as it goes and it didn't sound like they were taking anything off the table. So everything you're describing is possible. And I can totally see people I, being into it. Me, I, I, I like the idea of a state. I like the idea of like logging into Classic and saying, the state of the game I'd like to play today is uh, Miss of Pandaria. And I would be a level, what was it, 90? Whatever it was. Yeah. And I would yeah. just get in and play Miss. And then if I wanted to go visit the state of Wrath of the Lich King, I could do that and have a character there. Like I, I don't know if they'll ever get that complex with it, but I, I like that idea, yeah, you know? A- it's a it's a really difficult mess to manage, especially if you have to release patches for each of those. Uh, but then maybe you could get into yearly cycles, and I, I guess it's possible. It's just a little bit complicated. That being said, I wouldn't mind going to play a couple of Winter Grasp games. Yeah, you know? yeah, I wouldn't uh, turn that dude, down. After after seeing that classic panel uh, and how much work they had to go through. I, had I not seen that, I'd be with you. And like, this is pie in the sky. They're never going to do it. But after seeing, yeah. I'm like, if they put that much work into vanilla, yeah. the, yeah. the newer the expansion gets, I'm assuming the easier it is for them. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I want. I really am curious about uptick on this uh, in terms of you know who plays it and how long they play it and all of that. Um, but I really am. Even in these scenarios you're describing, I'm still probably just poking my head in. I'm more interested in the current line. I mean, it's just straight up how it is. I'd rather play what's new. 
and not necessarily what's old. I mean, I, as much as anybody, would love to go back and rip through Super Mario Brothers once in a while, but I'd probably much rather play a brand new announced Mario game. It's the same thing to me. And, so. and, and let's be honest, we don't play. We have access to all of those games, those old games. Yeah. We don't really play them. Um, and even WoW, you know, even the current game, I think many of us play them uh, nonstop, but many of us also play them for a little bit and then stop. Like, it's not the same world. Well, let's not dive back into that whole conversation. But the point is, we're not that... It, it, WoW isn't our life anymore. Right. Whereas arguably 15 years ago, it kind of was. Yeah. So we're not even playing it as much now. So anyway. Right. But but the thing I is, like classics you're... targeted at us though, right? Like if we're the guys that lived it, breathed it, loved it back then so hardcore that we couldn't get enough, aren't no, we the target classic audience? Classic is targeted... It's targeted as a minority. Uh, you know, minority might be a hundred thousand people. That's a lot of money to, <laughs> to to work for, especially if you're paying a monthly subscription, which is impossible to get nowadays to get to launch a game with. Um, but but I still think it's not us as the entire population that was playing WoW in two thousand five or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I think it's a small subset of that population, yeah. which is going to be super happy, but I don't think we can say it's all of those that are the target. Right. Garrett, I yeah, interrupted I don't think you. Anyone you were, was saying that. Yeah, well, I mean... Oh, no, but I mean, Scott was saying if we are the guys, because we were playing it back oh, then. Oh, gotcha. Right, right, right. right yeah, right. yeah. No, I mean, clearly, uh, you two are not. Honestly, <laughs> and I say target loosely, because I don't think Blizzard... Blizzard is this is Blizzard responding to their community and saying, okay, we could probably do something like this. There's there's enough demand that this could be a thing. This isn't them going, we've got a brand new idea. It's called Classic, and I know you're going to like it. They're not doing that. This is a response to the community wanting a thing, and they're doing it. Yeah. And I think yeah, that's they, getting they, brushed under the rug. Demand a for bit. It. It, it's, yeah. it's smaller than we might think is worth the effort, but there's definitely a demand for it. Yeah. I could, and it could be big. Like the chat room right now is talking about old school RuneScape, uh, which is ex experiencing a huge boost in popularity. It also just hit yeah, mobile devices. Yeah, but they huge. Well, huge for them. It's, I, again, it's irrelevant. If there's people who will play it, who I don't care. It, like no one else cares if the number pleases you. Yeah, but it's like EverQuest. EverQuest 1 still has more players in it than EverQuest does or ever did. Uh, when they uh, that what was that other game? Uh, uh, pfft, I can't remember the other MMO. Anyway, every time somebody does a proper sequel to one of their MMOs, it, it splits the call. Yeah, Ashron's call. There you go. And that thing just destroyed it. And Ashron's call one kept running after two was canceled. Like it's just crazy how that works. It seems like oh, a sequel should be the way you want to go, but what ends up happening is the opposite. And who knows? This could be a huge thing for for Blizzard. And they get to have it both ways at the same time, uh, with the same Seriously. sub. Like it's kind of smart for them to 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 own it, to take it, and to to knock out the illegal server stuff in the in the process. It's it's right that they control it, I think, because it's theirs. So let them control it. They're giving people what they want. That is vanilla ass. Wow, dude. <clears throat> I played that thing for twenty minutes and came out of it going, "Holy shit! Uh, I'm, I'm late for work. It's 2004. I'm supposed to be there at nine for a meeting. Like I, I my whole life." <laughs> You know, Nicholas is five, five, four years old. Like everything is back to the day. It's weird. You're leveling up weapons. I, I, have, I have a minimum range now with my hunter. If they get too close to me, I gotta hit them with a sword. Uh, if I run out of arrows, I'm just hosed. I have to go back to town to get some. Uh, I gotta feed my pet. Oh, oh, Henry's not very happy. Better feed him some damn food. I had to go buy. Like, <laughs> it's a weird thing to go back to it. It's very weird. Across the board. Like, I'm sure other classes feel the same way, but Hunters especially. You got freaking I, mana. I, like, ugh, I just, thought going oh. into it, I wanted it to be more updated, more modernized, but I think it actually being as close to original as possible makes it more unique and gives it more of an argument to play it if you enjoy Modern WoW. Yeah. I think it would have been too similar otherwise, and you would we would all just end up going back to BFA. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Um, all right, now we can talk about Warcraft 3 Reforged. So we all knew the Classic team was there. We knew they were working away on stuff. Uh, I don't think anybody knew that Warcraft 3 would get this level of treatment. It's not just simply a up-res by any stretch, the way that uh, StarCraft was. And StarCraft used, you know, sprites, and it's a different tech, and, you know, up was yeah, about all you could do. Um, that's what I wanted StarCraft Remastered to be. Yes. Uh, you know what would have been cool? StarCraft 1 Remastered in the, in the 2 engine would have been cool. Uh, well, whatever, who knows? Coulda, shoulda, woulda, but it's fine. 
this is a I was thinking on this one like the whole the same nostalgia glasses again I'm like eh, I'm not really going to play it in fact it wasn't even that big of Warcraft 3 fan outside of the story I thought the multiplayer was weird with the a hero you had to level up and go out and grind stuff for a while you did regular RTS things it just never sat well with me uh, back in the day so I approached this after the announcement I was like oh that's a surprise I didn't know they were working on it then they show some video I'm like oh my gosh they're like really like over uh, overhauling the graphics on this thing this isn't just a small tweak everything's getting a facelift in a major significant way including and, the cinematics yeah the opening set well we don't know about the rest of it do we or did they say in the panels no, I they missed? confirmed every cinematic is getting redone oh my gosh so i'm gonna get to see arthas like walk down that hall look up in the sky mm -hmm. and all that stuff oh yep. okay yep. now now i'm even more excited so that intro was definitely redone and it looked amazing used the same audio and music and stuff so it was really discordant kind of feeling of like this is new dude, but when that infernal rises up yeah oh, i'm oh, telling you dude, I, the, 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 uh, so um not to <laughs> all right <rip>. breathe <laughs> Just, sorry, Take not to rip on uh, uh, whoever planned the opening ceremony again, but this should have been your closer. I don't know yeah. who the hell looked at the lineup of the opening ceremony in a list and you're like, yeah, you know what? The phone game. Let's close with that. You know what I think? <laughs> Honestly, this is where I think Blizzard and Gamble will get to all that here in a minute, but I think they just were they were weirdly tone deaf on this and they and I agree with you it would have been a bigger splash and I could see a meeting where somebody's like well it's Warcraft 3 people you know it's not that big a deal so maybe we should uh, we shouldn't make that our fun I mean I could see them thinking that but they were wrong the classic team's done an incredible job here and I played it and I, I was like man I'm gonna play this whole thing again when it comes out because this is rad it's really really like much more than I think it's a little pricey. I, I will put that out there. I think twenty bucks would have been your sweet spot, but whatever. It's Blizzard. Uh, I'm giving them forty. I don't Blizzard care. prices yeah. are always what you think they should be plus ten bucks. Yeah, that's so, true. You know, it was the same way. Um, <laughs> but way to put it. yeah, it's I I think the 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 placement of it. There's definitely I think there's two factors. First, obviously, you want to close with the thing you want people to talk about the most and they absolutely want people to talk about the the mobile game the most it was their big announcement and sure it didn't go well but i think for news time for for newsworthiness or not newsworthiness but news pickup you close with your big thing that you want people to talk about so that's definitely a factor the other thing i think there's a legitimate uh worry that if you close with a remake People are gonna harp on you for you know redo yet another remake. They're reselling it something we already um, we they already sold us and blah blah blah. And they underestimated the the positive reaction to the amount of work they put into it because it's incredible. Like I'm sure everyone has seen it, so I'm preaching to the choir. But the the models being remade with that level of care, the cinematics, like it is. And I'm not even that big a fan of, of Warcraft 3, but it's impressive. So it could have totally stood up on its own as a as a closer. It's just there are reasons for not doing it, and I understand them as well. Yeah, I I, I agree. Um, also, the guy, uh, the, the head of the Classics team, very dynamic, super fun to watch on stage. Yeah, very cool. I think he's great. I, I you know, he's probably not going to be your, your, your main dude coming out talking about your big, hot new IP or whatever, but... He was one of those, he's got a natural stage thing. And so getting back to that kind of who's got the presentation, who's got the, the skills to be on stage, get you excited about stuff. That dude's awesome. So we were we were scheduled to stream Heroes of the Storm like right after the opening ceremony. And yeah. it was way late getting started. So Kyle and I showed up to the Heroes streaming station and we just sat and waited for it to end. So we ended up just watching it, the rest of the opening ceremony from an extreme angle on a screen. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's like one of the Blizzard employees there who was helping us set up the stream station. Like every time something would come up, he would like look at us to see our reaction. And when the Warcraft 3 uh, <laughs> cinematic started playing, he stopped looking at us and I, I was he was getting hyped. Like all of us, like Kyle and I were like, holy shit. <laughs> Are they really announcing what I think they're announcing? Like the Blizzard employee, even he was like fist pumping, and like we were all just so stoked. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, no, it's it, it, it would be one thing if it, again if it was just an upres 4K whatever. It's more than that though. It's really really good looking. It looks like a new game. It looks like a new RTS, mm -hmm. 
That I yep. didn't right. expect. I did not expect that. I came into but there it plays thinking like Warcraft Three, which plays really well, except for the twelve unit cap. That's still in there. Yeah, uh, that's weird. I would like that to go away. Yeah. But beyond that, it, they did it that plays with classic exactly uh, like Warcraft Three, classic Starcraft and Brood War as well. They did that, but um, they. Uh, I mean, yeah. for, for 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 esports, I mean that's part of the challenge. Uh, but yeah, you know, in my campaign, let me turn that off. <laughs> right. Maybe they will. I mean, the game's not out yet. There's there's time. It's neat, though, and impressive, and I walked away thinking that may have been one of my favorite things of the show, uh, if not my favorite, and that's weird to say on a year, but it's also, you know, again, a little lower bar this year, no new IPs, they didn't really say, well, we got nothing out of the Adham, uh, what are, what are they, incubator people, like what, what they're all working on, we don't know what any of that is, and we probably won't for a long time. So, so actually... yeah. Not to, again, bring us, I mean, the shadow of Diablo Immortal is looming over all of our conversations, but uh, Adham did say in a, a Q&A that all of their franchises are uh, being developed on mobile. All of them. Right. Um, and he didn't outright say this is what the incubator is, and I don't think it is. Right. But I wouldn't be surprised if a few of them are mobile games that, reprise the ips that we know and love yeah in and some form or some another people sure. are going to be a little bit worried by that uh they're only going to be worried about it because of this and they think this means oh no more proof it's all going downhill those guys need to freaking stop it the, the fact that your favorite yeah, sorry, video i didn't mean to to throw us down i know the, you know i know but, sorry, the, sorry but the fact that the fact that your favorite video game company is getting a piece of the pie they deservedly deserve i don't know why that's a problem <laughs> It's just not. But we'll get to all that in a second. All right. Yeah. Overwatch. New McCree cinematic was awesome. They introduced a new character. Her name is Ash. She's a cow lady to go with his cowboy <laughs> kind of business. Uh, <laughs> she, <laughs> she has. She's I not a cow. I don't mean girl. like a torrent. She's not like a torrent cow lady. I mean like I, she's I a. the term is cowgirl. Cowgirl. Thank you. Did I say. Yeah, I is it though? Lady. Is it. Yes, I, as I someone like who is. as someone who lives uh, within four the, within spitting distance of four different venues that has hoedowns every weekend, <laughs> the term is cowgirl. Okay, <laughs> all right. So it is cowgirl. I think that is true. Although Patrick's thinking of a second, I move. will not be corrected yeah. on southern terms by a Frenchman. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was just wondering. I wasn't sure. I, I trust you entirely. <laughs> over there, over where Patrick lives, it's a sex move. It's not a person. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Bob is her ultimate. Bob's a robot that looks like a tough uh, guy with a funny mustache, and he's awesome, and he should have been the playable character, but that's that's uh, pedantic. Who cares? It's, she, he's great. Uh, the real the real fun thing in my life would be if Ash is as fun. She, she is fun, by the way, really fun. Him as an ultimate is amazing. Uh, it's a great addition to the game. If I had my say, though, uh, Heroes of the Storm would get Bob as a playable character, and Ash would be his ultimate, or her, yeah, that his ultimate. That would be really fun. Yeah, I would love that. So Blizzard, if you're listening, that's a really great idea. Um, it was great. Uh, the cinematic was great, as you expect. All that stuff was good. New character, that's good. No new map or anything. But that's basically it. Like um, nobody's decrying, you know, their their performance there. But Overwatch really didn't do anything drastic. It felt a little bit like wow in that way. It was a good showing, but you know, kind of expected stuff. And uh, and that was fine. And I think Kaplan did the best job in terms of, you know, stage presence and hyping everybody up. And, you know, to to their credit, he's got a giant circular venue to do it in that's just insane. You know, it's got hype written all over it. So it's almost unfair that he gets that stage and nobody else the does. The only thing that's missing is yelling, are you not entertained? Right. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> kind of for sure. Oh, hold on a minute. Hello, I don't oh, know if I'm working or not. look at this. I'm very ill, though, Scott. I'm very ill. Oh, did you get sick? I, 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 I did. I don't think from BlizzCon. I think just from just, it's very cold back in, in the UK. Yeah, but you also, um, you've been busy uh, flying and staying here too long uh, and then big, long flights. Yeah, exactly. I didn't know too we were, much. It's I, too much. I didn't know we were going to get you today. This is a thrilling uh, development, everybody. Uh, oh, I was listening. I've been listening along throughout, but it just got to a point where I just couldn't stand it anymore. <laughs> 
I had to I had to jump in. Oh, all right. Was, uh, yeah. Any uh, full any, of inaccuracies. Any thought? Uh, any well, correct something. Correct a big one. What I've did we get wrong? I forgot them all. That's oh. the thing. And just, oh. it just that's how outraged I was. I've I've, I've forgotten everything that's been said. Well, the bummer. Uh, holy moly. The bummer is uh, my video is all jacked up, and I just need. I, to I think oh, Terpster is mostly mad because when we were waiting to get in, we were in line with Taliesin and Evatel, and uh, and Terpster's like, no, no, uh, Wow Classic will not be. <laughs> Included in the subscription, and yeah, and uh, Taliesin never tell it, but like, eh, no, I think, I think it will. And the terms is like, no, no, it's gonna be a box. It's gonna I, be an extra five dollars at least. Yeah, what do you and say then, about uh, that? Why are you surprised your prediction turned out to be not correct? Wrong. Yeah, I mean, because it's the first time I've known Blizzard to do something financially ethic ethical. You know, it's crazy. Because <laughs> um, they could have so charged five to ten bucks. They could have like hmm. five bucks if you're already sub, ten bucks if you're not. Yeah, well, and obviously, more. Mm. Obviously, <laughs> you not. were you were not listening because we discussed that and we said that while it All might the seem ethical, players, I hear you exactly, and I hear you. Yeah. I do, and I'm sure again a financial analyst analyst has come along and said actually we'll make more money if we just say <laughs> it's so, free yeah. if you're subbed up. And I think you're right. Mm -hmm. It's just I I got it wrong. I got the Blizzard greed in the wrong bit. <laughs> but it's uh, it's good to it's good to hear that it is available. I yeah. think the, so. The thing I think well, you're missing the point on Classic, Scott, yeah. is what made Classic special and why people want it back is community. Yeah. And it's the thing that the structure of the game currently doesn't allow for the same sort of emergent community by you physically being in the same space as all these other players. Mm. Sharding and phasing and things like that has eroded a lot of the community around realms. Uh, Blizzard doesn't really like uh, announcing shutting down servers due to low populations and stuff like that. So the new tech allows them just to push people around. Yeah. But what it means, though, is you don't build up the same sort of um, issues around uh, resources. You know, if you see an anchor weed, you can pick it up. Someone else can pick it up. It's all good. In yeah. classic, you see a thorium vein and there's an opposing faction or even the same guy on your faction. You know, you are racing down to get that last resource. And those player dynamics, that's what makes that game special. And that is what will mean for some people they will choose to play that game because their friends are playing that game and they're going to achieve that's, something together. Mm, that's absolutely true. Uh, and, you know, the having to wait 45 minutes to find a healer for your dungeon while spamming oh, yeah. chat and all of that. Yes. But, again... This is something that very few people now have the time for, of time or patience. Well, I don't, for. I, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know. I think the thing is, is actually, I think as much as, as much as, as much as we were young and we had less responsibilities, I don't think that there aren't young people today who aren't in that same position who no, even the the benefit and enjoy that <laughs> social dynamic. Yeah. No, but the difference is, Terpster, the difference is there are 15 million awesome games coming out every week nowadays which wasn't the case back in 2004 in 2004 you had one big game every month or two that everyone would play uh so you would play that and go back to wow oh, currently wait, i'm sorry I really i'm sorry where did, where did so video games 2004 half-life 2 unreal tournament doom 3 rome total war vampire the masquerade bloodlines that's a great one halo 2 <laughs> uh, grand theft auto san andreas uh, the Sims 2, Battle for Mizzle Earth, uh, Prince of Persia. You know, there were lots of good games and subsequent. But I, I hear you. There's definitely more available. I, I don't think, think it's that the you're same. playing short the 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 community and the the crazy engulfing aspect of Classic WoW. Like, how long do you think the the, the world first to hit 60 is going to be when this game comes out? Because I think oh, it's going to be a day two and a half. Weeks. Oh, I think no, it'll be. No, I think it'll impossible. be a couple of days. It's impossible. It'll be a couple of days. No, it's going to be. No. It's going to be very quick. The, the good thing is, though, uh, I am certain that Blizzard will be releasing uh, uh, weekly updated numbers to tell us exactly how many people are going to be playing WoW Classic. So we'll absolutely have an answer to this, like uh, very quickly. Do you think we will? So Do you think great. they're going to talk about those numbers, or are they going to be tight? No, of course not. They're never going to say anything <laughs> about this. They, <laughs> no. they, will, no, say, they, they will, will say. They will say. They will say there are X million players who uh, uh, played WoW Classic in the first weekend. Yeah. And of course, because all of us are going to create a character, play for an hour, 
and then a tiny fraction of those people is going to log in again a second time uh, after that. But they will still have those numbers, which will be impressive. This, That's this, what this, they're going to be talking I, this about. This is why I keep pushing back against you. You're, you're generalizing too much, Patrick. You're inferring your opinion onto the masses, and there's just no way of knowing yes. that. Yeah. No, I agree. And but the, my point is, we will never know because I don't think Blizzard is going to share those numbers. Yeah, I don't think so either. Uh, well, I, I th yeah, I think we will find out. I, but yeah, I, I hear you. I just think for me, WoW Classic is one of those things that I loved it throughout the whole of BlizzCon. I was like, Jay called it. Jay called it. Yeah. You think you do, but you don't. Yeah. Like it was really <laughs> one of those things where you sit down, you play that game, you're like, oh wow, yeah, I remember this. Uh -huh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By oh, level, this is slow. you'll have oh a, you'll have like a whole gold by the time you need to buy your first mount. Yeah. Oh no, exactly. Uh, you, I remember like literally leveling up and not being able to afford to buy the new spells that I'd unlocked. <laughs> like you know, to that level of of poverty and grind. But actually, like I said, the thing that ruined it for me is I wasn't playing it with all my friends, or I wasn't trying to make friends. Mm. Oh. It's about slowing down yeah. and building bonds and relationships and not having the... Oh, oh there he <laughs> goes. There he goes. Oh, he's back. Such a shame. He's back. Bad Terps, are you back? There you go. Sorry, I'm yeah. on the phone. I'm back. I'm back. Anyway, yeah. my phone was like, come on, you're, you're, you're terrible now. But anyway, I think I think that, that social, social structure of Classic WoW will be why people play it. And I think that, you know, I've, I've said before, you know, the, the, the old school RuneScape thing, you can look on Twitch. It's a, it's a order of magnitude bigger than their current game. I think that Warcraft Classic could be more of a spectator sport as well, which is only good for the game as a whole. Yeah. Whereby a lot of people like us to invest that that game requires or what. Yeah, that all made sense right there at the end. Clear mountain core. Yeah. Which achieve. <laughs> Your phone's cracking up so bad. <laughs> sorry, every, every important word is getting dropped out. Yeah. I heard molten core though. Boom. Sorry, sorry. I, I've, I've gone to 4G now. It's fine. Oh. Um, so yeah, I'm just saying that we will, we will watch people and their achievements in Classic WoW. I think more so than play it ourselves. Yeah. I think that you know, if you were to be a Classic WoW streamer, I think that's an amazing niche that you could fill if you can do it well. Because I would love to watch someone and their guild and their journey throughout. See them take on you know, Max for the first time, uh, see them trying, even just like doing pickup groups, like how are they going to manage to do Black Rock Depths? Like that takes a long time, you yeah. know, and then trying to get all the players together. It's, it's exciting. Yeah, uh, you're right. You're right. Is it, so, I don't want to be that it guy. Really it kind of is. Spending <laughs> trade chat for an hour and a half to get a healer that's going to quit midway through because you yes, it is. You old cranky yeah. man. Yes, I, I <laughs> actually think that the that Terpster's onto something here, and I do think that there's life to be had in that regard. I think streaming numbers are going to be huge for classic, it's, it's, mm. especially at the top. And as it goes along, it may maintain itself. I don't know, but I think there's a there's a place there for new people. To establish themselves, some old WoW streamers but to it, it get a boost. the beast. I think. Yeah. I think the more yeah, that, the that better I classic agree. WoW does, the better WoW does, and vice versa. Now, do I um, want to so sit there I, and watch I, it? No, I'm not interested that's... in watching it or playing it. But I agree that you there say are... that, Scott. Honestly, I guarantee you, if we if we started now, we're one man short of a five man. Yeah. Okay, so we could run dungeons. Yeah. Okay, and if we were to make it so that we are gonna get to level sixty, and we're gonna do that as a group, and then obviously listeners would be, oh, I want to play, and already you can see how, oh man, this would be an amazing community. And this is before they split up guild sizes. Right. So it's not like when they had to chop IAE into like twelve different groups. Right. No, everyone could be back in the same thing again. Yeah. And you start thinking like, hang on, actually, I could see it. I, I'm not gonna play it and be the best in the world, but I can play it and you know have an amazing social experience yeah i okay we've okay never mind <laughs> but anyway that's fine carry on carry on let's talk about ash oh yeah. you can shoot dynamite and yeah. bob's overpowered oh yeah so crazy yeah they are She's, all, all of that is true uh, by the way Everything actually you said. let's yeah let's move we haven't really talked about diablo yet and i feel uh since we're probably not going to be talking for another hour um <laughs> We should Maybe probably do we it. Should move on. Yeah, we should probably do it. You know what? Let's do just let's straight get to it. Diablo Immortal announced. We need to talk about the damn thing. It's a it's a Can mobile game. Can we just game. have a show of hands? Uh, do you guys have phones? I have a phone. You all have phones, don't you? Yeah, I have a phone. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Just yeah. wanted to check. It's a good point. A lot of people are making. All right, here's here's my. I want to give you guys an analogy. You tell me if you think this holds up. And this is what I think happened and what went wrong for Blizzard for this announcement. Um, I will say. Uh, and I've, I got a death threat over this. My first Twitter death threat. It was fantastic. 
Um, he's since been wow. banned from Twitter. Uh, but uh, he he thinks I'm an apologist for Blizzard. I'm actually kind of in the middle here. I I think Blizzard had a very tone deaf announcement, and I think that players are sometimes a holes. So it's a little <laughs> bit of both. But here's my analogy that I think where things went south for Blizzard. Imagine, and I did this the other day on Core, so if you've heard this, ignore this, but I think it holds up. Uh, you're a kid, and you want nothing more. Let's say you live in the 80s, and you want so bad to get a brand new bike, and you just know you're going to get a bike. You're so stoked to get your first bike. You're like 10, and you want to ride with your friends. They all have bikes already. You're going to get a bike. And about halfway through the year, your mom says, it's not even close to Christmas, Oh, by the way, we may have a little fun surprise for you come uh, come Christmas this year. Wink, wink. Might be something you're looking forward to. You might be real excited about it. Can't say a whole lot right yeah. now, son. And then you can't go, oh, it's the bike. It's the bike. They're talking about the bike. Okay, I'll do your chores and homework and stay on time. You know, be good so you can get the cool thing at the end of the year. Okay, mom, okay, this is so cool. I can't wait for my bike. Christmas rolls around. And about a week before Christmas, mom says, son, I know you're excited about Christmas. But, you know, just dial back your, you know, don't be too excited. I mean, I'm not saying you're not going to hear anything. we got a lot of cool stuff happening on Christmas. But but it's not maybe exactly what you're asking for. But, you know, maybe maybe it's cool. It's still cool. And uh, so, you know, that's all good. And the kid goes, oh, well, I don't even know what this means. What am I supposed to take from this? Well, whatever. Christmas is coming. I'm going to Christmas. Let's see what happens. And then the kid shows up Christmas morning. He's down there at 6 a.m. He's in front of the tree. And his mom comes out with a box and hands it to him, and he opens it up. It's a pair of roller skates. And he goes, ah, shit. This isn't, this, this isn't a bike. This isn't a bike, I, Mom. This isn't what you told me you get. Well, I did tell you a week ago. You know, like, there's, yeah. there's the issue. You wouldn't be as disappointed if it was for your birthday and not for Christmas. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, should have, you, should have announced, you should have given this gift at PAX. And yeah. not at your big orchestrated I, yeah. uh, event. Yeah. I, I love that the big analogy is essentially Scott telling the story of this BlizzCon, except he replaces Diablo <laughs> with bike and BlizzCon with Christmas. I find this is exactly. <laughs> no, what you know happened. what? I like that. I like that Blizz, Blizzard is the mom. Because if you remember, though, this announcement came out pre Gamescom yeah. because they were like, look, I know we're really passionate. We don't have anything new to share at yeah. Gamescom, but hold, hold on, hold on, because you know BlizzCon. We're working on a few things. Maybe we'll have something to talk about then. Mm. Uh, and obviously, if you believe the rumors, they were going to announce Diablo Four. Um, they are actively working on Diablo Four. We know that. Yeah. Um, what they, uh, I think, a, a closer analogy would be that you really wanted like a, a new IKEA. Um, uh, Vista's chest of drawers because uh, you really like that aesthetic yeah. and Blizzard's like yeah 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 don't worry don't worry we're going to have that ready by then but what you don't understand is they, they've they built and taken apart and rebuilt that chest of drawers three times now mm. trying to make it look how it does in the picture or what they want it to be and it's it's still not there and so at the last minute they're like we can't we can't show them the chest it's not you know we, we can't make it yet we think it could even change like we've had different different directors working on this you know the vision is changing a lot so we can't we just can't talk about this we we made this mistake before with diablo 3 mm. you know we talked about it in 2007 and then we released Eight. it in 2000 no, no, no WWI 27 yeah. 2007 i was there oh, so. oh was it in paris yeah, yeah. you were there um <laughs> I was there too, yeah. <laughs> um and then it came out in what 2012 12 yeah 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 yeah, yeah. So it's like five years between announcement and release. Yeah, do you remember? Uh, do you it, remember? Was cool. it was 2008. 2007 was in South Korea. I was there uh, indeed. Okay, and maybe okay, you weren't. 2008. Okay, but, okay, that's fine. fine. No, but you're I right. There. I think I, I think this is an element that is that is getting a little bit uh, uh, that is not understood by a, a lot of people. How bitten they were by this announcement. And I started working for Blizzard in 2009. I, I could still feel it. Um, and and they were they really didn't want to make that mistake again um mm. I, to to get over you know get things over with the analogies <laughs> i really think that everyone is super angry and forgetting that we are pretty much the entire community blizzard uh, uh fanboys and diablo fanboys and super angry fanboys together are mostly agreeing on all of this you know everyone agrees blizzard messed up hell even blizzard agrees they messed up you know they they didn't do it correctly they didn't uh see this 
uh, uh, coming the way they should have. They didn't plan it yeah. the way they should have. Yeah. Everyone agrees. Uh, everyone agrees that uh, this game is probably not for them. Maybe not Blizzard. Uh, but, you know, the people who are kind of, yeah, you know, eh, that wasn't... I the played people it. Who it's, don't a, want... it's a good game. Yeah, it's a good model game. Uh, I don't just... know the business model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, there, there are a few things that are, that are still in question. The business model, the involvement of NetEase is kind of a big thing here. Um, I think they but... spoke about it. As far as I'm aware, Blizzard's providing art and, and production support. The actual development of the game, again, I don't know how much say Blizzard has over the monetization of it. You think you'd hope uh, that they were going to be like, hey, I... you know, nothing too crazy. Right. They've said they've said that they're not thinking about it yet, but they implied that they were the ones deciding what how it would be monetized. Why Chang did address that question to an extent. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if that's the case, if NetEase is the ones doing the entire development, um, then it means that Blizzard is actually working on other things, including Diablo 4, or however it ends up being named, which is great, right? Yeah. They're, they're still doing that. Yeah. Um, by the way, Diablo, if people saying, oh, they're just farming out this this thing to other people, and this is a quick cash grab, and it's going to be crap, um, Diablo Switch wasn't made by Blizzard, actually, e even though we thought it might have been initially. It was Iron Galaxy that made it, and it turned out great. Well, you know, it was ported by them, but yeah, yeah but they're, yeah. they're they're copying a game that Blizzard already made. Yeah. Of course, of yeah, course. Yeah. But I mean, my point is, it it's it's not them who did it, and it wasn't a disaster. Yeah, I, mean, I see them shopping that as a positive because I don't want this game, and I don't want this game to detract from how long it takes to get me a PC Diablo. Right. I see it as a good thing. I'm like, God, good, because I'm not playing yeah, this. Right. Exactly. And I am gonna play I it because I play stuff, and I and I know I'm gonna play it, and everybody who wants to burn the earth and salt it when they're done we'll probably also play it but even if they don't they're all going to play four or whatever four is called when it comes out so all of this outrage and people signing petitions this is where i'm this is where i have a big disconnect with the community i agree 100 percent. i think blizzard blew it i think it was the wrong note the wrong time i think they we all agree uh, we everyone all agree. does and this isn't me just giving platitudes that i agree with people i want them to know i really do think blizzard screwed up it's not me just saying that so that i then can say but on the other hand toxic gamer this and that no i really believe they screwed up but also but, but we the, suck like the game yeah I, I had a good time with it i went upstairs exactly. thinking like, i went upstairs problem. thinking i was like, going to hate like, it i was sure i wasn't going to like it and i got up there and I sat down and said, well, I got to try this so I can talk about it. Like, genuinely, it's good fun. That's it good. It's like Diablo. Yeah. It's got multiplayer gaming in there. You jump in the parties of four. You've got 20 in the open world. It's simplified, so mm -hmm. you don't have, like, mana resource. You've just got health, mm -hmm. and all your abilities are on cooldowns. So I can see, again, for some people who want more of a skill gap, but it's a mobile game. You know, and you, you can. there's only so much you can do with the interface you have and the platform you're on. Mm. And I think for me, I, as somebody who plays a lot of mobile games, I'm like, yeah, I will play this, assuming it doesn't cost me 400 bucks a month to actually <laughs> be able to play the game. Yeah, if there's more than one currency, an argument I'm going to be annoyed. Though. Go ahead, Patrick. Just, just to take the other side for just a second. I think there's an argument, not an argument, but I understand the sentiment of some people that think mobile games are either not for them, best case scenario, they, they're just not interested. Could be the best game in the world. It's They're not going to play it because they don't like mobile games. And I think there's a little bit of, of um, like false assumption in there. Maybe there could exist a good mobile game you would want to play, but that's the, the that creates that sentiment of disappointment. Right. Um, and, and those people are also, I think the Diablo community is kind of almost a sub- community that's apart from the rest of blizzard almost in that they are hardcore diablo that's all they're interested in right so they don't care about the other games they're like really in, they love that franchise so much that getting the uh, uh mobile game presented as the next big thing feels like a disappointment just like a band yeah. you love that is super hardcore and like i don't know punk or something ended up showing your next album their next album and it was this you know smooth, super smooth jazz or something sure kind of yeah exactly so i understand that uh <laughs> sentiment to an extent and i also think there's an issue which uh jason trier vocalized really well which is there's some people think on on both extremes um that it's either you're with us or against us and in this specific case i think 
the there isn't another extreme like i haven't heard anyone say this game is the best thing ever and if you don't like it screw you right so there isn't right. that extreme but there's right. definitely the other extreme which is this game is the end of the world and blizzard is dead and diablo is uh, uh you know now the worst thing ever and for those people they have that mentality that if you're not also deciding that blizzard is the worst company ever now then you're against us yeah. and that is a real issue because underneath all of this we agree yeah, like i agree and, and even those people i think are going to give it a try maybe not play it but they're going to give it a try and there's no reason why a mobile game wouldn't be a good game period uh 10 years ago when mobile games started appearing and becoming popular we all had this hope that at some point core gamers could be interested in mobile games wouldn't it be awesome if you had a phone don't you know don't you have phones don't yeah. you guys have phones yeah. uh which has become a meme now but <laughs> we all have phones it would be fun to have a good game on mobile on, on a mobile and through the you know eight or nine years it, we've gotten used conditioned to the idea that mobile games are often not great for core gamer values and often uh, riddled with microtransactions. But it's not like there's a golden, you know, it's not in the Ten Commandments, like the thy mobile game shall be crap and riddled with money no, grabbing microtransactions. There's a ton of mobile games so I love that I pay real money exist. for. I played a, I played. It could exist. Yeah. It, it and, absolutely and, could. And, yeah. And beyond that, beyond that, there's no reason why Diablo people who play mobile games shouldn't be allowed to have a Diablo game, even if it's not for us. As long as, and we've all alluded to that and, and they've confirmed it a hundred times, as long as Blizzard continues making PC games, there's no reason they shouldn't be allowed to do that on the side. If they stop making cool PC games, I'll have a problem as well. <laughs> right, but of course at you a, will. At a, at a con, at a con where they're giving you WoW Classic and Warcraft 3 Remastered, I think it's a little bit short-sighted to decide, oh, they don't care about PC gamers. <laughs> uh, like, this is literally something the community has asked for in the case of Classic WoW, and literally something that the community exploded in joy for in the case of Warcraft 3 Reforged. Yeah, so, yeah. anyway, all right, rant over. It's a good rant. As I liked it. It was a good one. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have a lot to disagree with there, other than just, you know, I had my the death threat didn't help but just my my view of of some behavior just it was just compounding like oh my gosh was where's the venn diagram between complete a-hole and diablo fan and i think i may have oh, found it, made it. Me sad yeah it made me you really know, sad too but <laughs> what are you gonna the, do the blizzard community is this place where you're happy blizzcon is this place where you're happy and i understand that's the reason some of those people feel like they were slapped in the face as they say but the the camaraderie, the wholesomeness of this show is important to me and to the yeah. community. I think, mm -hmm. and that I was just can't like believe that Jab's been president for what two weeks, yeah. and he's already to managed to mess it up this bad. I mean, how he developed <laughs> the Diablo PC mobile port thing in two weeks, I don't know. But like, <laughs> yeah, I just can't bad. believe it. Blizzard's. <laughs> Like we want Morheim back. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Look, at, look what's already happened. Yeah, and that 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 to me that's the story of this BlizzCon is timing and, and messaging. Yeah, like I I, yeah. I don't know why they thought it was a good idea to a announce this and then to also have a Q and A. I can't believe they thought a Q and A was a good idea because it seems so obvious that you should no, you should have complete control over anything that is said into a microphone about this game yeah. at BlizzCon if you're even going to announce it at BlizzCon. I don't think Because that's what's mad. In the, in the WoW Q&A, we submitted questions up at the Dark Moon Fair. They were vetted. They then selected people. I was one of them. Yeah, you were. Uh, you can game that easily. You can. I know. I, I put like eight questions in there. It's great. <laughs> and they pick one of them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then they wrote it out for me on a nice official looking card. So I had like a nice memento and I go up there and I read it out and it was all done. Whereas obviously for this, they couldn't do that because they just announced it. And then they were like, OK, cool. I'm sure you've got a load of questions. Um, hit us. You know, oh, no, well, not even actually. Even if they did, you know. T, I mean, how hard would it have been for you to just not read the question? Well, the but the guy who the guy who came, the guy who got up and said it was a late April Fool's joke and then turned around like some kind of warrior. Uh he was vetted. They just didn't have the day long. Give us your phone number. We'll call you if we pick you. Vetting. It was right before the Q and A. This guy got picked. 
they said, what are you going to talk about? He says, I want to talk about controls and how it controls and mobile controls versus PC or console controls. Okay, cool. That's a great question. And he gets up and says, is this a late April Fool's joke? And then leaves. Yeah, but it, it's not like if they had his phone number, he would suddenly not have asked that question. Well, you'd, be, you know? you'd be amazed, it, actually. I think a lot of people do, you know, because you have to... I don't know. I... Yeah, I'm not saying it's perfect, think, Patrick. Would you, would you, you want to be banned? Would you want acid. all of your accounts banned? I wouldn't. Because that's they, the thing. They know you are. Ban him. They won't, they, they won't ban would. him. But here's the thing, oh though. Oh, my God. The PR nightmare that that would be. Yeah, yeah exactly. he's not going to do that. <laughs> like, straight up ban him. Straight away. No. Boom. Oh, wait. Sorry. <laughs> April Fool's. Lol. Here's Sorry. what. Here's the thing. The guy got his. The, the guy got his question from 4chan. They all celebrated it after he did it. Like, it was a big planned thing. If you would have had scrutiny of a day and a half of having to sit with the group, get your phone number. Okay, we'll call you when we're ready. That has an incredible. It's, a, uh, it's, a it's two not and like a half hour wait though as well. well we, we were just gathering. don't do a Q and A. Yeah. And yeah. then we have to go to another panel. Does right. it matter? Does it matter? The, the thing is, he expressed the sentiment of a community that was really angry, and he was an a hole. I think it was inappropriate. He was a I don't think total it was, dick. You know, the end of the world. Complete I think, dick. I think. I think Berger answered really well. The answer was super, you know, mm, obviously uh, uh, prepared and rehearsed, and and but it was addressing his issue. It was like, no, we think it's an authentic Diablo experience on mobile, and we think if you give it a chance, you're gonna like it. That was great, but no one cared about the answer. The the thing is, he was expressing that that anger that many people genuinely felt, and. It was a dickish move, but I don't think I'm trying to be devil's advocate here. I don't think we're doing, you know, uh, uh, the community a service or that part of the community a service. Maybe we don't want to do them a service, but by discounting their sentiment, oh, I think they that, should that be able to express feeling themselves. of anger is is genuine. Sure, and and I think it's it's illogical. Because Diablo 4 will be coming at some point. And they'll play it. They'll play exists. the hell out of yes, it. Of course they will. Absolutely. Any of one but of these ones are like, I'm done with Blizzard, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. But you'd lie. I, I, I don't want to put this on the American team, but I've worked with the EU team a bit, and this would have never happened. I guarantee you. Mm. Uh, the so, amount of times at Gamescom they've been concerned about overhyping and the words I can and can't use because we don't want players to infer that this is going to be something. It's very, very particular in how things are, are spoke about, even down to Q and A's, their person there's a person holding the mic. But here at BlizzCon, it was a mic stand, so it's like, hey, go on up, you say what you want. And like the 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 goblin guy during the Q and A with you were doing, Scott, oh he went gosh. on for like twenty minutes. Yeah, he, if there he, was a guy oh. holding the mic, they could have taken it away and been like, okay, you're done now. Yeah, you know, and it doesn't need to be broadcast. You don't need to be on stage being like, okay, brother, you know, move on. We got a lot more questions <laughs> to get through. Yeah, there's just little things whereby. Europe, I think, is petrified that America's going to come down on them hard for something. <laughs> so they actually put in that extra level of care and concern and fear that's like, oh, hang on, we better stop and think. How many ways could this mess up to the point where I lose my job? Okay, okay, let's control <laughs> those things. Yeah. So, Whereas in America, I, I think they're just like, oh, well, you know, it's fine, cool. Let's have a Q&A. That sounds fun. Mm. People are going to have questions. Yeah. You know? I yeah, think I think, unrest, you know, I think, oh, go ahead, Gary. I was just want to say, I, I think the unrest from the Diablo community is overall fair um i think diablo 3 hasn't seen as much content and i was I, I would have expected it to and i'm a rather casual diablo fan you know what i did um, though i came so home i can played. only like, imagine that if you play it a lot it's just kind of like <laughs> i mean how how is blizzard in in this late in the game how did they not get that far ahead of their own of their own type yeah. you know titanic franchise you're right I, about I that i don't get it i came did, um, did you do just, did you do like me that's garrett what, that's fine that we, we, i disagree I, with i'm sorry that I, blizzard is every other company in the world puts out a game when it's been long enough that you can put out a game blizzard the thing that defines them is that when they're not ready to talk about something when they're not ready to show something they won't and that is the essence of that company. And I understand if they had made a, you know, two seconds trailer like or or that's not what I'm Final saying. Card, Diablo that's 4. Not what I'm saying at all, Patrick. Uh, I'm saying that the Diablo 3 didn't have the tail on it that basically every other modern Blizzard game has. And I'm mm. surprised. And, and to, so to me, Diablo 3 feels like old Blizzard and not in a good way. 
I see because they mean. moved yeah. on to Diablo 4. I yeah. think they've been working on Diablo 4 for, I don't know, four years. Maybe. And it's still not ready. I, I really uh, think that's the case, you know? And that, and that's I, why they're they, not they, working. They, I'm just saying that because of that. They've remade it at least twice. Yeah, we know that for yeah. sure. They've yeah. at least had two, at two, least two iterations and multiple game directors. But I don't know about you guys. As soon as I got home from this con, guess what I did? I fired up Diablo 3. I played 3, Diablo 3, yeah. And I played yeah. a ton of it. And I don't know what that says or what that means, but I played, I don't know, I did like 10 greater rifts yesterday like what's wrong with me <laughs> but it's, <laughs> but it's true switch. that the game really is horrible. essentially done yeah the game is done now oh like, it is it's, it, not, it, it's yeah. diablo is the closest thing to destiny to me which is another huge disappointing franchise in my mind yeah uh it's just it had it's something that i feel should have had a longer tail yeah uh diablo you, and you so should that's why you should get in you should get into Destiny 2 for a second. They have gotten enough of my money. <laughs> I know, I know. Destiny, has, like, Destiny is a franchise where I have drawn a line and been like, no, I've given you enough money and you've disappointed you get me the game free it's, now, bat on it, and then when you really buy Forsaken, you, you really get the other game. Oh, oh, I was ready to drop. jump through the screen and strangle that Destiny dude because I'm like, <laughs> we're late on the opening ceremony and you want to interrupt so the that, host so that, so that the was again that was because they were they were slow in getting people into the convention center because the security yeah. security they were running sucked. 15 minutes behind Ugh. and so they were filling and so they they moved stuff forward yeah, Equally, I know. that guy should have opened with bam yeah. we love blizzard we love blizzard fans we're giving you all destiny 2 for free if you try it before the 18th now let me talk to you about other things related to destiny yeah. rather than save it like some because it, it you know hearing booze at blizzcon is so alien that, and that i was... heard more booze this year than ever before yeah. um it's spooky people booing that well, guy was the you... first booze and then you got booze around the diablo thing but the... then there were cheers around I'll, I'll do a um, prediction, guys. black ops and mm -hmm. they got cheers yeah black ops got yeah, cheers. that was weird uh, i'll do a prediction um diablo 4 or diablo world or whatever it ends up being yeah. um i think it's gonna be it's gonna have all of the elements of diablo immortal that are not diablo 3 um, all of the MMO ness. Mm. Uh, Berger did say when they asked the question about um, playing it on PC, which, by the way, the reason it's not playable on PC is that you already have the version of that on PC. It's called Diablo 3. It's essentially Diablo 3 adapted to mobile. Um, but all of the MMO ness, mm. I think, are going to be uh, uh, re injected into the other one. I think that's the direction they're, they're going. They did say, um, Berger did say, you know, the console version brought things back into uh, the PC version, and we always get inspired by the other versions, and we add stuff. And so I think there's a very strong chance that the, the direction Immortal is taking is inspired by the work they've they've been doing on on four. Right, but right, right, right. And a, and a, just a reminder, back to my Christmas analogy: your mo <laughs> your mother gave you gave you roller skates. It's up to you to decide. If you're going to be yeah, but they're not Blizzard <clears throat> roller skates. Hold on, though. They're, you know, they're, it's, they're, it's a, they're we Chinese don't know that. It's it's up to you. It's we up to you to that. say. It's Chinese up to you to say. Is such a good way to wrap but it up. hold on, this is a good way to say. Uh, I'm you. Here's your choice now, gamers. You're you can be disappointed in those roller skates, but ride them anyway. You can be excited about those roller skates because that's a, those are that's cool. You hadn't even thought about how much you wanted to do roller skates. You'll get a bike some other time, or you can decide that your mother sucks. You're going to burn the house down and poison her oatmeal. If you're going to do that, <laughs> it's those people I don't want to hang out with. It's those people who I don't understand. It's people who want to go that far with this that I don't get. It's, it's, it's possible to have two things in your head at the same time. One, Blizzard screwed up and it's weird and they handled it wrong. Blah, 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 blah. And it's also possible to keep in your head that extreme reactions to it are unhealthy for us and we shouldn't be doing it and we shouldn't encourage it and we shouldn't be cool with it. Uh, so that's where I'm at and I'll play it and I probably won't play a ton of it, but I'll play it and, uh, I'll still keep playing Diablo three until I get a proper Diablo sequel and nobody's dead to me. And, um, but I'm a little disappointed, but I'm still playing their games. Like it's okay to be that guy. And that's the guy we're going to be. That's, I think that's the guy we all are and that's the guy we'll be. So be that guy I, I, until just, until they stop, as long as they keep making PC games, which they're not going to stop anytime soon. Like, have you no. seen the 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 quarterly reports like they're making so much money on pc games uh and, and they will be making tons of money on on mobile games as well but they're like why would they stop oh no it's don't get ridiculous. let's not be under the uh, let's not never not understand something that's very important in all of this like it or not hate it or not freak out or not 
Blizzard is about to make a crap ton of money on mobile with Diablo. More people will play Diablo. And other games. Yes, but, but true. But if we're looking at this in a vacuum, more people will play Diablo than any other game they've made in the series. That is absolutely just straight up the truth. Now, whether it's a huge financial boon it can be argued, I suppose. But I have a feeling they're going to do really well with it. Bad Diablo knockoffs on mobile make money and lots of it. An actual Diablo game on mobile is going to stratosphere levels, in my opinion. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know how that kind of well, cash infusion the, hurts. I don't know how that doesn't doesn't help the long running series. The fact that it's got offshoots. Nobody sits around and complains that Assassin's Creed has a mobile game because they do, and it's kind of fun for what it is. But it's not the one I want to play necessarily. But it's there, and it makes them a bunch of money. Different, but it's the reason it's different. If you get into the mind of those people, is again the love for the original punk band and you feel like blizzard is selling out which again they're not they're still making that punk hardcore album um confusing I, art I, I would just like to remind everybody that people got mad when they saw diablo 3 they thought it wasn't dark enough oh yeah oh exactly hey, can we just exactly. can we just remind everybody hey, that that was a reaction to diablo 3 garrett um, i'm not i'm old enough to remember that funny they, about hearthstone right they people did like really yeah this yeah yeah a, like, what is this like a card mobile what is this <laughs> which was, was announced like, at pax yeah, which yeah. Was, is kind of my big point here yes, is like but still it's not for your but core still. audience it's not for the hardcore fans that show up to blizzcon it's a messaging issue i don't know who made this call right and then they can and no yes and no i was in the in the audience i was part of the people who announced who who took the journalists two packs for the announcement of hearthstone people were not happy until they got their hands on on the game and you're saying yeah. it's not hardcore it was a shift for blizzard blizzard is a is a different company now um and people did not like the idea of hearthstone but when they they played it it wasn't for everyone but most people really liked it and it did speak to the core gamers at blizzard even though it was a tiny card game yeah plus um, mobile came later uh, later in fair, i don't think sense. that's going to be the case with diablo immortal but right people are judging it more harshly than probably when they will have had their hands on yeah okay. or maybe they'll whatever people put dig themselves in a corner and they never leave but but uh, i'm old enough to remember when diablo 2 was ripped up and down for a sticking with 2d graphics and and sprites in uh, 2001 or whatever it was and not going 3d like everybody else seemed to be maybe going and then i remember the utter outrage that the camera was locked at 800 by 600 uh pixels that was the maximum resolution they later expanded it to 720 or uh, 1024 by 768 but even then it was super limited and people were up in arms about it you're always up in arms the arms are everywhere and they're up we're always up <laughs> Look at these arms. They're up again. Like it's just it's just going to pass like everything. And when we all get our proper mainline Diablo 4 sequel, we're all going to be stoked. But you'll all find something else to complain about. So whatever, man. It's just the way this stuff goes. I <laughs> After I got the I mean honestly that death threat was like a final straw for me. I was just like, okay, really? Like you're going to uh, the language was yeah. he, he if he sees me in public he'll pop a cap in my ass and I said dude the 90s called they want their freaking gangster rap back like what are you doing yeah. I like to imagine like the whitest office worker with a pocket protector giving you that threat oh I guarantee it <laughs> I guarantee you that but was I think, not but that's the thing yeah. exactly on, I don't put much faith into online stuff because if anyone said the same thing to your face you make a judgment call on that right you look at them and be like I'm not <laughs> I'm not intimidated by that at all. But yeah. you put it online and, you know, all of a sudden it's scary and spooky and all the rest. Yeah. Um, but anyway, Diablo Immortal genuinely played it, enjoyed it. My feedback is my thumb hurt. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> moving around on a, on a screen, you know, it was it was building up too much friction. Uh, I was chatting to some of the Blizzard guys. They were like, oh, you, you're pressing too hard. I'm like, oh, don't Steve Jobs this. I'm holding it wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, it, it genuinely... I was like, oh, I don't know how long I can play this game for before it starts to hurt. Yeah. And the you, point you, of a Diablo game is to play it for a long time, yeah. in my experience. Sure. So I, I, I you know, that's we'll, we'll see. How I get. Do you do you want to? I don't think I've heard. I don't think I've heard a single person who tried it who didn't say at the very least, oh yeah, it was cool. Yeah, no, I so uh, nobody I knew who played it walked away hating it. It's only people who haven't played it yet. I think that's. I played it. I thought it was cool. I'm still probably not going to actually play it. When yeah, it comes you're out. not a mobile guy. You yeah, don't like it. You don't even play Hearthstone on your mobile phone. You're a huge. Hearthstone I hate guy. playing Hearthstone on the phone. It right. is the worst way to play Hearthstone. Oh, wow. Right. So you're, you know, you're just you're already there. But um, Terpster, do you want to tell us about your hot new product to deal with the thumb, uh, the thumb fatigue on the phone? Oh, Diablo Loop. Yeah, yeah. But we had, we had different ones suggested. 
There was a heroic lube. Heroic lube, I like that um, one. You can just spit on your screen and have nephilim. Um, so <laughs> you've, got, you've got all of those solutions at hand. So I, I read crossed. the heroic lube on Twitter and laughed out loud. Yeah. I did not hear the nephilim. Yeah. Yeah. That is great. Yeah, Terpster is. Thing. So I think he's like, told I me that, that joke like three times last week. Like three times, I heard this joke from Terpster, and it still makes me laugh. I think it's very yeah. funny. <laughs> nice job but i'm excited yeah. I, I genuinely am excited because i do play a lot of mobile games mm-hmm. and i've played like <laughs> crusaders of light in fact we talked about it on this show like a year or two ago yeah, yeah I remember uh, that. we were like hey there's a company's made world of warcraft on a phone oh it's nettie's they're the guys who publish wow and oh my god uh, you know it's literally off the back of that i guess the conversation spun up about hey you know maybe we should work together if you're making you know rip offs of our games maybe yeah. we should make a real one together yeah. Also, um, people that want to, people should actually yeah. play it before they. This conspiracy that's the exact, it's just a reskin Crusaders of Light is silly. Um, I've played Crusaders of Light and I've played this and it didn't feel like no, Crusaders the, of Light. To the, me. The, it's the control the, the scene. Actual, people, it's, like, yeah. No, it's it's called Endless of God. Oh, which no, I'm no, sure no. Sorry, sorry. People who say it's a, it's a reskin of uh, art right. have not played either. Right. But, I keep uh, thinking of Crusaders of Light for some reason. It's not the one, the right one. And because heard... that's the one people have heard about. And right. since they don't research for half a second, uh, <laughs> that's what they go with. But it has nothing to do. As you said, Crusaders of Light is more wowish than Diablo. But yeah. everyone brings it up because it's NetEase and they don't understand anything. Yeah. The, the other one is yeah, I mean, Endless looking of at, God. Looking at, uh, uh, yeah, Endless of God, it looks very similar. Mm. Um, yeah. you know, I'm looking at a, a, a barbarian type thing spinning around whirlwinding, uh, same sort of schema on the side, but yeah, because it's, it's, it's a rip off actually, Diablo. Yeah, that's what it is. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's I mean, Diablo yeah. Rip-off. So it might not have been that expensive for them to make because Blizzard had the assets already, uh, and had they have the, the engine, engine already. and yes, yeah, of course. And, yeah. So they just need <laughs> to put that's the not, numbers but in. That's not what makes the game. What makes the game isn't just the graphics. Or and the engine, you know, that's the the like saying, oh, I have a, a couple of rakes. I'm gonna make a house. I'm not an architect, but surely it can't be that complicated. <laughs> I have a couple a brick of rakes. Is not a house. <laughs> a brick is not a house. Is my no oh, no no. Wow. I like your idea that you need a you just need a couple of a couple of rakes will take care of it. Oh, that's amazing. Also, I only have one rake. I don't know why people would have two rakes. But breaks. I was saying breaks. Oh, they said breaks. breaks. Okay, sorry. It's just French. That, that makes worry. it less funny. Yeah, it's still kind of funny. All right. Um, all right. The rest of this, I think, is all super simple. Um, Hearthstone got R- R- Raza Takistan's rumble. Rastakhan. Sorry. He's in the game right now. Rastakhan. I know. It's King Rastakhan. <laughs> his whole good 300 moment kicking what's his name off the thing. That's fine. Uh, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Garrett is our Hearthstone guy. You excited <laughs> about it, or what's your deal there with the? Uh... Um, yeah, it looks good. It's another expansion. This is part for the course right now. Um, you know, I wasn't expecting there to be a big surprise. It would have been nice if there was one, especially after the announcement of tournament mode getting canned. But yeah. uh, mm. this is what it's we expect. disappointing in that it's the it's the solo run seems to be a, a dungeon run again same style as, also, as, yeah, as that, the cobalt that... and catacombs mm-hmm. and the keyword seems to be the simplest keyword they've ever introduced which is if you kill something with more than it needs you get to do something else or those cards do something else so yeah overkill which is yeah. i think actually a pretty damn cool mechanic uh, it's yeah just... it's just it's just it's not as transformative as previous keywords have been where it's been like you know, tri-class cards and, oh, how does this work? How does this do? Oh, what, and this? And you could do this now? You know, so, but at the same time, it, you know, it works. And yeah. hopefully it should shake up things so it's enjoyable to play on the ladder again. So, yeah. I think it's I'll, I think it's a subtle enough effect that we may, it, it may actually, f- like, find its footing and we may see it on, on enough cards because, like, Magnetic from the last expansion was pretty much a dead keyword. Mm. Mm. Yeah. No Sorry, one. I need to go. But I'll, I'll, I just want to add one thing. Uh, the disappointment for no big new thing in Hearthstone, I think, was mirror, mirrored in Overwatch. It was just one character. And even, you know, I'm not saying we would have needed a stage, but, like, the game is almost three years old now. It's getting a little bit mm. samey. And while uh, I like the new character, I'll play it. I'll, I'm still playing uh, uh, Overwatch every week, if not every day. But it was a little bit like, ah, uh, all right, you yeah, know, I, I would have liked to see something and, and even the, the the events are still the same from the launch the seasonal events so. yeah 
Patrick, yeah, that was a bit, little bit of a bummer. Patrick, well, anyway, the only, only one other thing I want to say in case you have any feedback on this, and it's very quick. He's going to cut on me. I forgot to, oh, I forgot to mention, no, I'm not going to cut you off. Uh, I forgot to mention earlier, and the chat just reminded me, there was this weird moment about the Diablo thing that kind of really rubbed me wrong, and that's when the YouTube video, which had like 150,000 dislikes uh, and some really rotten comment stuff going on, Blizzard went and deleted it and re-uploaded the trailer. No, no, that's not... Okay, oh so, God, so clear it up. What happened? What happened? Yeah. what happened? yeah. So I think some people got that idea. I mean... Maybe it happened. I really don't think it, so no, because they, they did a bot, a bot purge. It was yeah. yeah. So the the bot purge was comments. It's not deleting the video, and the video still has like an abysmal amount of like it has three percent like versus dis dislikes. Yeah. So I don't think they would up re upload it, and instantly you would get that it wasn't re uploaded. What what people saw was there are different versions of the video. When you click on the um, uh, launcher. If you're in different region, they have to make different videos because you have the rating agencies that have different things, Peggy labels three. you need to put yeah, mm -hmm. on, on the thing. And it happened for all the games. So people would click on the one from the launcher, see that it was different, and were start starting to say, oh, what the hell is happening? But it, I, I really don't think it was deleted. No. And they that didn't realize the they could dislike it. it even more. There was like eight yeah, different versions of the video to dislike. They should have been happy. So but, for I mean, every yeah, country, every, every bots as well out. to, to downvote, <laughs> yeah. and so those bot um, downvotes and stuff get purged. Man, the internet's complicated, YouTube. isn't it? Freaking no, out the no internet. One, no one has that power except YouTube to um, actually purge uh, right. false right. interaction. I hate the internet yeah. sometimes, though. That's lame. Like ah, and and that's now an urban legend that's never going to die. Um, but. Yeah. yeah, and and the 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 different versions. It's the case even with English speaking. Uh, they don't do one English speaking. You have one for Australia, one for the UK, one for the US, etc. Et crikey, et mate, that's Diablo. That. <laughs> like that, yeah. Yes, crikey, mate. So that's, that's what Diablo. I think. I think Great. that's the explanation of why that that yeah. legend got started. Yeah. But, All right. Well, there you go, chat room. You've had your answer. I hope that satisfies you. Now. Uh, Patrick, you have to leave. You're out of here. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank I have you. a son who needs. And so does Garrett. Garrett's got a has yeah. a lunch thing. You got to go to. I've got a wedding rehearsal. I got to get to. Oh um, wow. Yeah. Busy, so, busy day for these easy. boys. Just tell them you walk in a straight line. You say I do, and then you get very drunk. Yeah. Or vice versa. Uh, I would say this real quick. Patrick and I do a monthly show called the video, the monthly video game briefing, and it's uh, available everywhere you get your podcast. Go to frogpants.com/slash/mvgb. And you can get all the feeds and stuff, and it's really fun, it's and awesome. we're having a great time with it. Patrick, have a fantastic time. Uh, Garrett, Garrett Wines Earl over at uh, amove.tv, and uh, uh, yeah. have a great so, wedding. That sounds like no fun. The the live shows we did from BlizzCon, Franger Chicken, and the Nexus are fun as hell, and uh, there's a lot of wild classic talk over on R2T2 from last night, so go check that out. All right, go get that. Thanks, Garrett. We'll talk to you soon. All right. It's just me and you, just Tercer. Me. Just like last week. Hello. Just like at the uh, event. It was just me and you the whole just time. Just like in, in my hotel room. Yeah. Uh, we're not talking about that. No, what not yet. About that? Well, we are, but it's not. Funny. we can't get specific. I had specifics. someone come up to me and said, Scott said that you have a micro penis. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. <laughs> Wait, who? What? Do you remember who it was that told you that? Because no, it's... I, no, I can't. I can't remember. But I was like, <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds legit. I don't think that Scott. That doesn't sound like something Scott Johnson wouldn't say. Oh, you people. know what it was? I know what it was. Somebody said, "Why didn't you?" <laughs> they said, "Why didn't you have some fun with Terpster when he stood up during the Q and A?" And first of all, I was surprised. I didn't know you were in there. <laughs> So, yeah, I was the shock. I thought that Metzen was going to be, but you were the one who invited him. Yeah, I invited Metzen. So that that whole thing I knew about, everyone else was shocked by that. I was thinking, like, oh, I should, I should text Scott and say, Metzen's here. Yeah. But then, obviously, you know, I thought, oh, no, I won't ruin it for him. Yeah, no, I'm glad you did that. But you were the surprise, and then you got up there, and I should have yeah. at least commented on the mustache. But this is what my brain said. My brain went, hold on, Scott. You can't say anything because then you're, so you're going to get called biased by, like, yeah. a bunch of strangers. Hey. It's not even that. People would be like, do you see that time when the guy made fun of the guy's mustache? Yeah. They wouldn't know that we know each other. Yeah. They're just thinking that suddenly the, the guy moderating it. It's just like everyone afterwards is like, oh, shit, I hope he doesn't say anything about my face. Right, right. And so I, it hit me, yeah. and I and so I had to hold my tongue up there. I was going to say... But I was already... I was going to go up and be like, hi, yeah, I play Mutha, a tour in Paladin on Earth, on a, you know, on Defiance Brotherhood. Yeah. Go Goon Squad. Uh, my question's to Chris. Uh, but then, you know, the Metzen thing happened, and the whole time I was just thinking like, oh, shit. Chris Manson just like oh my god that was Chris Manson yeah you know and I was just I just literally got up there and say like, oh um yeah um I got a question it's about uh 
class artifact relics. And yeah. it was, you know, it was one of the worst questions there, but it, it was, was it still got chosen. It was good. You did a fine job. It did. Uh, it did. But anyway, I don't, but I think the micro penis may, may have come from me making a comment about, well, I could have mentioned uh, his micro penis as a joke, but you don't really that have been one. even better on stage. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he doesn't really have a micro penis, but it was great hanging out with you, by yeah. the way. I really, I'm glad that we it got was. a chance to lovely. do that. It was, it was very enjoyable. Yeah, it was it good. Was, it's the sort of thing already. It's like, oh, I wish we could go back. I know. I know how Jack felt about Kate in the island. <laughs> they needed to go back. Wow. A lost reference. Who would have thunk it? Uh, okay, quick wrap up of everything else. <laughs> Heroes of the Storm got Orphea. She's great. Super fun. She's the first yeah, original character. I don't character. like her, though. I spoke about this. I know. Mm -hmm. You think she's kind of pedo, that, right? Is that the deal? I think, yeah, I think it's a little bit pedophile. I think the the... You know, the first time they get a chance to do their own unique character and they literally release her with a schoolgirl skin. Mm. You know, and like, it's like, hey, you can play as this little schoolgirl, but she's got a demon inside her. <laughs> you know, it's okay. It's not weird because she's actually really old. So she might look young, but she's, you know, it's like, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm out. Yeah. Like that, that for me is just like, come on, heroes. You had this great opportunity. And I get they're trying to appeal to other demographics. It's just like, oh, I wouldn't have opened with that. Like, by all means, have a, a strong female character. Right. But does she have to look so sort of, um, uh, yeah, questionable when it comes to, I don't know, I just feel like it's like from some real bad questionable anime. She and does. Like, yeah, she yeah. feels like a little bit of a pervy anime, you might say, or something. Yeah. yeah. I just, I don't know. And again, I'm sure she's got a great backstory. She's very empowered. Um, that intro movie was not made in House by Blizzard. And I think that shows, mm. um, it, you know, it's very generic. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really know what was going on. Things are moving around, but I had no kind of investment in what was happening. Um, it was a real sort of down part for me in the opening ceremony. Really? Um, you know, we had that. We had that amazing uh, Jay Allen Brack forcing Mike to look out upon a crowd of people uh, who were holding up cards, but due to lighting, uh, I think it was meant to say like Mike or B or Blizzard or something like that on yeah. all the cards, yeah. but because of the lights. He it said nothing. It. it was just a load of white cards. Yeah, he couldn't see it. And, then, and when he says, you did all this, and, he's, and he literally, literally says... Literally, Mike goes, what? I did what? <laughs> what, I what, did, what did I do? <laughs> and then and then Jab just goes, this. <laughs> and then Mike's just like, oh, oh, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Can least, I go, please? Yeah, at least it showed that he didn't, you know, that he wasn't prepared for that little bit. No, but it would have yeah. been nice if everyone else was prepared for it. That's yeah. my takeaway from it again. <laughs> that would have been really good. Yeah, the very else. first thing Jab comes out to do, and it's an absolute bulls up. Yeah. Um, you know, we were sat there. I was I was waving little glow stick around in the air. I was trying to get in on it, but yeah. Yeah. Wow. That, what was, a, that, was, that a was a bummer. Disaster. That was kind that of was a bummer. True. People talk about Diablo Immortal, yeah. but the true disaster <laughs> was the card prank. Uh, because even though on the virtual ticket, we had a guy come out before and he said, okay, everyone. Oh, there's a prank uh, to say bye to Mike. Uh, you know, Do Jay's going to come out and yeah. we're going to, you know, hold the card up to your face. If you've got a glow stick, wave it in the air. If you've got a noisemaker, smash it again. Yeah. You know, and so we at least had some context. That mm -hmm. didn't go out on the virtual ticket. So all you see on the live stream is Mike trying to leave the stage, the new president assert dominance and say, no, <laughs> you're going to come back with me. And, and he's like, just, you yeah. know, got him like in an iron vice grip. Yeah. And he's like, look out, look, look what you made. Yeah. And he's <laughs> like, and you got to remember, like, <laughs> he's, <I> he's, <laughs> uh, he's like three times as big as, as Morheim. He's like yeah, a huge exactly. man. Yeah. You forget that, you know, Jab's a big guy. Yeah. You know, he's way he's, bigger. He ate his Weetabix. Yeah. And so it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, it's tough to, to see that. Uh, and, but at least, you know, I found it hilarious, <laughs> but for all the wrong reasons, obviously. Yeah. It made me laugh Good. a lot, but it was, it's fine. Uh, let's see, but she's uh, just a quick note on Orpheus. She's very, very fun to play like a wicked cool That's what I hear. kit. Yeah. Apparently actually like an amazing character to play. Yeah. Um, it's just, you know, and she's not uh, like in various stages of undress or anything. It's not, we don't want to give the wrong impression here. She's fully clothed, like up to the neck, even just like whatever. But per Terpster's point is, eh, does she have to be kind of? I don't know. I, he's Terpster's not totally wrong about the vibe people are getting off that. There's a little something there going on. I just, I just think it's a little bit weird, and I'm just seeing like her schoolgirl one. You know, she's got a t-shirt and you know, uh, full-length jeans and stuff like that. It's just still like. I just feel like she should have been aged up a bit. I just don't think she needs to be as, as young as she's kind of done yeah. there. We don't really Especially need a little you're, kid. You're yeah, kind of killing her in a game. Yeah, like, we can we can deal with Lily because Lily's a freaking panda. It's fine. 
Yeah. 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 Unless you're a furry and you're into that sort of. Well, I'm, look, I'm not saying anything bad about furries. I'm saying there's probably out there some fanfic about Lily that is really disturbing. And I don't want to know about it. I don't want links to it. I don't want anything no, to do with it. No, I mean, yeah, exactly. I, I don't want to. In fact, if you could if you could tweet me them so I can add them to my block list, that'd be great. Okay, I'll get so those just right send to me, you. Send me those things. Send your nudes. Uh, I'm sorry. Just so, exactly. Yeah. And that way then I can put it on a block list and I won't have to, oh, no. Oh, no, I've, I've seen it. So that'd be great yeah. if you just send me all this. People could do that. That'd be wonderful. Um, real quick, one final note about the con itself, and then we'll do a quick email, and then we'll get out of here. The con itself, uh, I think the biggest bummer of the entire con was not Diablo Immortal, was not any of these awkward moments on stage, wasn't any of those things. <laughs> it was the security. The security uptick sucked this year. And yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying it's bad that we up security at these events. You probably need to. I get it. But they hired really bad security companies. Uh, I walked up to, to the, the thing with my talent badge. Um, that I have to use to get behind stage to do the Q&A. So that's what I have to wear. And the guy says, oh, talent boy, you going to sing me a song? And I looked at him thinking he'd be smiling and laughing. No, just being an ass. Like, just a-holes. So there's that part of it. Mm -hmm. Then there's the whole very slow process of getting anything through there. They're, they're going through everybody's goodie bag, even though they just got their goodie bag and then got in line. And then now they're opening the goodie bag, lifting Diablo up, poking him with sticks. Like... It's like nobody told them what those were, and so they went through everybody's goodie bag. They wouldn't well, let me. Even then, my... they got to because otherwise, you you put a bomb in the goodie bag, and why you bother? You know, or well, that's where I put my gun. Yeah, I get it, but I don't know. Just the way they did it was jacked. But and... the problem it, it was it was very slow, and like I said, it delayed the opening ceremony as much as they opened the doors. I think from I think they were open from six thirty for security, and you yeah. couldn't get in till nine thirty. Yeah. And the uh, the presentation wasn't meant to start till eleven. Yeah. So you've got sort of four and a half hours in there to try and get through as many people as you can, but the reality is it takes a long time. It really and, sucked, man. You know, I went through a, a kind of a separate media line that was still reasonably long, um, and you know, I literally just had a phone, a wallet, and some sunglasses, mm -hmm. and uh, for that they ended up having me like hold them in my hands above my head. Uh, so I walk through, it buzzes, but it kind of shows lights on the side where it detects the stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was all in the bits I was holding above my head. Of course. So then they look at those and they're like, yep, yeah, sweet, on you go. Yeah. So at least that line seemed reasonably kind of smart. But once you've got a bag and like, I, you know, I was with a load of people who had like camera equipment, tripods, yeah. microphones, you know, stuff that looks pretty dodgy really if you're not sure what it is right you've got all this like weird wires and stuff everywhere um so it's just yeah it's always tricky and it's very alien for me like in the uk we do have stuff like that for big events um but like you know we were going to like parties and stuff and before i go in you know getting frisked by a guy on the door yeah and i was like normally my evening finishes this way <laughs> uh, and he didn't find that funny no, he didn't. um he didn't. you know but the, yeah it's i guess it's just a reality of the world we're in and you know I don't think I felt any safer because, you know, you kind of, you think, oh man, I could have easily just had something in this or I could have hidden something there and been, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think people with intent would still get They'd in. figure out a way. Um, yeah. I yeah. think it's just more so the kind of the random crazy on the street. Mm -hmm. It's just one more line of defense there. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, and I, and again, I'm, I'm all for efficient new security. It just didn't feel very efficient. They, they wouldn't let me in with my voice recorder. Um, even though I had a media badge and it was clearly a voice recorder and I needed it to record voices for interviews. And they were like, Nope, can't take it in. You're gonna have to leave it out here. Take it back to your hotel, which is nine so miles. Why wouldn't they do that? I don't know. But right in front of me, Garrett, he's not here to talk about it, but Garrett was in front of me with his 4k dslr camera his recording equipment his microphones his multiple cables all of his stuff he went right through they said no problem my little voice recorder handheld recorder nope no go even though i have a phone that does essentially the if same you thing got, you got a media exactly you got a phone you can do exactly the same you've got a media bag that yeah they you didn't care been like, Look, they didn't go care. get your manager i'm sorry to be that guy but you're gonna have to go get your manager well Not the whole line. part of it is i didn't want to make that I'm line allowed. wait forever because that was another problem and then there's here's the worst one i'm going through a line Oh, you're going to love this thing I tell you after this. But anyway, I'm going through the line. I've got my badge on, and I've got the little wow pins that we got, and it's on there. They, I said to the lady, here's my phone, here's my wallet, here's my stuff. It, do I need to get, take the badge and the lanyard off? She goes, no, just go through. So I went through. <laughs> come back. All right, I come back. Uh, would you, does she have any metal on you? I'm like, I don't think so. Maybe it's this pin on this lanyard. No, those aren't the problem. Anything else? I said, no. Walk through again. <laughs> she goes, all right, we're going to have to scan you. 
scans me, does the whole crotch scan, does all this stuff, gets up to my lanyard. Sure enough, yeah. beep, 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 there it is, the damn lanyard that I said. And so I'm making all these people wait because she yeah. doesn't think it's the thing. I know it is. Finally take it off, put it in a bowl, <laughs> get across, it's fine. Like it was that kind of stuff. And then here's the one that will really piss you off, and I don't know if you heard about it, but Bill Duran, <laughs> Bill Duran yeah. who was there, witnessed a guard take a bribe from somebody in line to skip the line and skip the metal detectors. 20 bucks. That guy got what? past him. So if you think you didn't feel safe before, I'll tell you uh. what. Yeah. I think he stuck around though, got pictures, got him fired. That guy doesn't work for whoever that temp security agency is anymore, but that just that's sucked, crazy. man. I know 20 exactly. bucks. But that's, that's why it's a little bit like the TSA. It's all a show of, of, of force. And it just slows you down. Doesn't really make you any more secure. But wow, holy moly! Yeah, that's that's crazy. Twenty bucks as well. Yeah. I could I would have paid that to skip the line each day. Yeah, Easy. I would have done that. That would have been worth it. It's cheaper than parking in Anaheim. So sure, why mm -hmm. not? But also, if you had intent to do harm, twenty bucks is nothing for you. You're just about to end. You are in other oh, no, people's exactly. lives. So exactly, yeah. Take uh, it out on a loan. Really rubbed my cheese. Everything about that just bummed me out. But. Other than that, thank you everybody who came to the WoW Q&A. I think it went well. People seemed stoked about it. Uh, all your great comments have been great. All that stuff. Uh, um, I, I couldn't have had a better time with that. And what was your favorite question on the uh, Q&A? Uh, probably the Metzen question. And then oh, right really? after that, there not was the, a... Not the relic one? Well, there was, a, there was this pedophile-looking guy with a weird mustache that came yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was a good question, yeah. I thought. I thought so, too. Yeah, yeah. He creeped me out, though, so I was I was like, hurry up and go. Yeah. No, I, I hear that. I um, hear but that. the Goblin guy with the For the Horde thing, I just... That was my least favorite oh, thing. <laughs> man, exactly. Jeez. Again, he got a little boo. So that, that was okay. I was with. I was. I was cheering that boo. Yeah. I was. I was really going for yeah, it. Yeah, it was the third, um, but th third boo of the con that I had heard was that one. So yeah, uh, it's it's sad because there were like ten people that didn't get their questions answered. But I think have they already, or are they going to? They're, they're going to put answer them, them all. The, yeah. The, the 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 site somewhere, and I think they were going to do. Um, Ian's going to do um, a personal team answer to every single one and yeah, pull their character Yeah, but I think they were going to take their characters, yeah. their mains, and put them on the thing as well. So it's their mains asking the questions. Yeah, they're going to make so, a big deal out of it. They, they, they seem to take, I mean, even backstage, Ian's like, I just, I really don't like it when people don't get their questions answered. So one way or the other, we'll do it. And I said, okay, cool. But we had a ton this year. And even if we'd gotten through the line, we had another 20 backups that were internet ones. So mm -hmm. it would have gone on forever, but that all went really well. Can you remember? Can you remember any of the ones that didn't get asked that you thought were good? Uh, I still have them somewhere. I took it with me. Um, crap, that'd be fun to do on the show. Actually, we we could ask. We could answer them for them. Yeah, we can answer them for them. Who needs who needs Wow Devs? Uh, we us? think it's great. It's not something we're actually talking about at the moment, but we we've definitely talked about it internally. For yeah, a bit. totally. And you know, we'd love to we'd love to work on some of that in the future. We think yeah. that's great. We Nothing definitive that. to announce now, but yeah. you know, who knows what the future will bring? Next question. Like, yeah, we can answer everything yeah, yeah, like next that. Next question. Yeah, exactly. We could have done all done the whole Q and A. Sure. That's a great idea. It's certainly something we talked about internally. Uh, you know, it's not something we can talk about at the time, but you know, we think that's really fun. <laughs> We're yeah. a big fan of your question. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, thank you for your question. Next question. Uh, yeah. Also, yeah. I think the esports and the tournaments were really good this year. They were uh, all nail biters and really fun to watch, kind of across mm. the board. So no complaints there. And also the reason I think they never skip another BlizzCon, this esports stuff is too big for them to do yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. And, the, and that's the thing. It, it takes up the entirety of the Anaheim Convention Center. Mm -hmm. like, like, that is crazy. The panel were kind of pushed upstairs into the corners yeah. of the Dark Moon Fair. Yeah. And then you had the main stage. Every other stage was eSport. Well, and if, if that's I, crazy. If I had another complaint, it would be that the the way they rearrange the main stage to accommodate that more, you know, spread out nature of things created a real cluster getting people in and out of there. So if you were doing a big... It definitely was harder. If you had yeah. a good seat, you had a harder commute. Yeah. But apparently the reason was is that the main stage only ever filled up for the keynote uh, and then the closing ceremony. Oh. Um, and the rest of the time was like half empty. Oh, so they were like, okay, let's put it back to how we used to have it, right at the end of the hall. And then we can fit in this Diablo Switch PlayStation and the Diablo Immortal PlayStations. Mm. Um, so it, it got them more demo space. So there was more stuff to do on the show. Yeah. And reportedly, you know, was still big enough for all the panels they had and things like that. But definitely, you know, moving around the convention was a little bit trickier this year. Um, and then with the added security outside, uh, like once I left, I was like, oh, OK, well, I've got to go back. But oh, I, you know, I've got to queue up again. Oh, you know, it, it made it more of a of a um, of a quest each time. Did you uh, did you catch any of the bands or the music acts 
or any of that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, train was yeah. Uh, hilariously bad, uh, and I still don't quite know why they were there. Uh, Lindsay Sterling was amazing, yeah. uh, like uh, just phenomenal showmanship. And the amount of people I spoke to who were like, oh, I'm a massive fan of hers. Yeah. You know, she seemed like actually a really good fit for the event. And then obviously Hodor, Christian then, um, you know, that that man is uh, is a he, he gets a crowd jumping, mm-hmm. um, and uh, it, maybe not so much the the BlizzCon crowd. Like in terms of you know, there weren't that many people raving around, mm-hmm. but at the same time uh, it was a, it was a solid set and really enjoyable. Um, yeah, I heard yeah. he was I heard he was good. Kim really wanted to go to that. We ended up getting dinner and got stuck and did some other stuff, and we ended up not seeing any yeah. of it. But uh, but I heard he was good. I heard Lindsay was good, and and I heard Train was just weird. And not good. Train, they played a couple of good songs. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And it turned out to be like a cover from The Who and stuff like that. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, that's why I like, okay. <laughs> they weren't even their own song. The best stuff wasn't their own? Yeah. Oh, that's the a bummer. The best stuff wasn't their own from what I was hearing, no. All Maybe right. they really nailed some other stuff. But for me, it was like, geez. Yeah. These guys, who booked these guys? I wonder what they do next you year know, Randy joked. I think Randy joked. I don't know if he was serious or not. He said that the reason they're booked is it's Mike's favorite band. And oh. I can only assume that he's lying and trolling me. Yeah. Um, but I really hope that that isn't Mike's favorite band because obviously the, the the Saturday was Mike's birthday. Yeah. So um, you know he gets to pick. He can have whatever he wants. Yeah. And he's Mike Morheim. He's exiting as a as a president, and yeah, it's a chance for him to say, yeah, one last my last thing, my last act as president. Train will play at BlizzCon, and the whole place yeah. went, oh, okay. Because that would explain it almost to me. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, fair enough. It's not for me, but you know, Mike, it's your money. You spend it how you want to, man. Yeah. I'm gonna go watch these other people. Why not? Uh, otherwise, it's just so weird. Mm-hmm. It's a weird I, I, I did not meet a single person there excited about train. No. Yeah, I no. would have rather they just put a mic and had open karaoke, <laughs> and you could sign up, and just any anyone in attendance gone up and sang. I've been like, cool. I get it. Community first, guys. Every voice matters. That's what we call it. Yeah. And it'd be fun. Everyone enjoy the karaoke, um, but oh yeah! What wow. if it? What, what if it about? was only you could only do train songs, all two of them that would be <laughs> karaoke songs as a karaoke? I prefer yeah. that to train yeah. coming out and playing more than just their two songs. You yeah, know, I think uh, that would have been good. That would make me laugh a lot. Um, all right, I think we've summed it up. That's the show, and yeah. uh, it's such a weird one. It's like I start with some people and then I end with Terpster, which is really interesting, and I, I enjoyed there it. I have go. to admit. Uh, T, you're home. You're good. You're recovering. Uh, I knew you were gonna get sick. I'm, I just I'm, knew I'm it. I'm dying. Scott. Yeah, I'm ill. I knew I'm you were gonna get sick. Ill. Uh, I hope people um know that and send me their thoughts and prayers. Yeah, uh, thoughts and prayers. Uh, to uh, yeah, it's, it is a it's a serious serious cold. I've got the sniffles. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, my I'm coughing occasionally. You know, I'm touch or go at this point. Scott. <laughs> it's you know, it's pretty serious. I never get you sick know, of BlizzCon, I, and I'm not sick this year. So take that. And I don't uh, think it's BlizzCon because yeah. it only kicked in like yesterday, mm. uh, and you know that's like a week later. I think I would have got it sooner. I think yeah. it's literally just uh, flying and or just the UK getting angry at me for leaving for two weeks. Maybe, but all that flying, all that fun, all those parties and hobnobbings, all of the mm. different travels. You went it's to the Vegas. It's the and the knobs, I yeah. think, exactly. Yeah. You were in Vegas for a whole, gonna, like, three, four up. days in Vegas. That's enough to give you something and have it gestate. So No, but it stays in Vegas. That's what I was told. I said it's fine. Oh, right. You do what you want. It stays yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. You leave your seed there. I've gone too far. Oh, definitely. I've gone definitely. too far. Uh, anything you want to mention uh, that's going on? Do you have anything you want to pimp here on the show? No? Uh... No, 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 never do really. Right. Uh, you know, just um, I, I met a lot of lovely people at BlizzCon. Mm-hmm. So thank you to, to all of you. I had some amazing uh, some drinks uh, with some good friends throughout. Um, I spent the Saturday uh, evening with the lovely Brian Halinka. Um, wow, and he's the best. Uh, that man, I, I love that man so much. Yeah, he's and, ripped, uh, though. Did was, you see how ripped he was? Oh, My gosh. Yeah, oh. exactly. But you know, he's almost as ripped as me. You're right. Yeah, um, not quite. Yeah, it's yeah. Not he's getting there. He's getting there. He's got some real promise. I said, <laughs> keep at it. Maybe lay off the lay off the fries. Yeah, burger and fries. Yeah, uh, five guys though. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, he's but a, yeah, he's what a, a lovely man. Yeah. And uh, we just and we were we were hanging out with with lovely people. I met. Uh, I was chatting to um, Brian Birmingham from the the Classic Wow team. Mm. 
and that guy is a is a scone. Oh, I love like, him. He would give me nothing. Yeah, he would give me nothing. I was probing him, asking him questions about stuff. Nothing. He's yeah. like, I don't. I don't think we've uh, mentioned that publicly, so uh, I'm not gonna. Yeah. I was like, oh, come on, come on, Brian, yeah. don't stonewall me. Yeah. Come on, just tell me it's fine. I won't tell anyone. It does give me high um, hope. What they show it gives me in Warcraft Three or Four is well, gives I think me more huge so hope. So is it's, it's like I said, all, every single person on that team, and I don't think it's a massive team. I think there's like you know at least four. It's what I could garner from it, but I think probably more than four. But every single one of them reportedly um, plays a lot of classic WoW. And is you know internally and cannot wait and is super hyped about yeah. that game. Yeah. So the people making that game are hyped about it, and that is enough for me to know that that will be an authentic uh, experience. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, Halink is now in charge of class balance right. and uh, you know kind of combat and things like that. So I'm I'm just excited to have a whole new thing to get angry about, <laughs> uh, you know, with him because he already ruined Ashran right. completely. Yeah. Uh, you know, he just uh, he just. <laughs> Yeah. I just can't wait for just what I don't know what's going to get pinned on him, but it's going to be beautiful, yeah. and I'm going to enjoy uh, just bringing it up at every opportunity. Right. So at- hopefully, hopefully, there's some sort of class rework that comes up that uh, people decide is all all Brian's yeah. fault. At Holinka on Twitter, if you want to f- easy exactly. Yeah. They've, they've redone the uh, the spell effects on paladins. I don't like the consecration effects. So I'm going to blame that on on Halinka. Obviously, he has nothing to do with that. No, but uh, I've decided now that's Halinka. That's yeah, his that's, fault. That's fine. Just lay the rape, uh, rape. Come Ra- on, what are you doing? Wait, sorry, we've consecrated. I know. Great, I... great spell effects. <laughs> oh. Jeez, Halinka, go back to your secret project while you come back. Yeah, to whatever that was. Consecrate yeah, all over again. Whatever you're doing over oh. there. Uh, I'm I'm anxious to see what he was working on and now not working on and all that other stuff. But we'll be back next week to talk more about that and more goings on in the world of Blizzard Entertainment and certainly World of Warcraft moving forward. We have a new patch coming soon. The instance.net.net is our website, not net. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Instant Show. Terpsters, of course, at the underscore T. I'm at Scott Johnson. Patrick's at not Patrick. You can find Garrett at Garrett Art. And there are more shows like this at frogpants.com. That's going to do it for us, for me, for Terpster, and for those other chuckleheads. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. We did it.